turn up in a white suit and a red short, we'll all be happy. <laughs> but a great character, and that should be a really interesting match. Yeah, yes, yeah. I'm very much looking forward to that one. Right, it's Judgment Day Part 1. Brilliant drama. Everything to play for. Even those who've been there and done it and bought the T-shirt, and in the case of Bingham, lifted the title back in 15, mm. they're pumped up for today. Mm. This means the world. And in order to guide you through the action, we have plumbed the World Snooker Tour war chest. We've dug deep. <laughs> we've, gone, we've gone under the sofa for every 50p because we could only do it with the most prolific snooker commentator in the business, pride of Eurosport, pride of ITV, and here he is to guide you through the next two days. A very good morning, sir, to Dave Hendon. <laughs> A couple of edgy frames weren't you early on, but this is uh, the opposite. Of course, Nopan Sengam with his maximum is top of the high breaks list. It's amazing. He's one of these players, Matthew Stevens, that you know, he can play so well against the the bigger names it's sort of it almost inspires him you know we haven't seen much of him on the tv this season lost a lot of sort of qualifying matches and 22. hasn't really got to the the latter stages consistently but what a what a player well, i mean when he gets going and we're seeing evidence of that and this is exactly what you want you know in the best of 19 even though it is 19 frames to start off like this on the front foot it really settles you down. Yeah, and also show your opponent how good you're feeling. So, 1-3-5, great start, a total clearance from Matthew Stevens. What a way to start Judgment Day. Eight tables, of course. Table two is Chris Wakelin against Robbie Williams. And this is their first frame. Robbie Williams uh, at the table as we pick it up. He's played at the Crucible three times, but not since 2016. Beat Anthony Hamilton, that was a good workout for him. 10-5, never easy to beat. Of course, Wakelin is a ranking event winner at the shootout, 20 in the world. He'd start favourite, but the head-to-head -head favours Williams 2-1. These matches, I don't, I don't really think there are favourites, are they? It's such <laughs> a specific round, this. Yeah, I mean, you'd probably have to favour Chris Wakelin because of his success. And he's been really consistent, hasn't he, over the last uh, couple of seasons, sort of... Uh, Almost breaking into the top 16. But, uh, yeah, Robbie Williams, one of these sorry, very underrated sort of players. But, you know, he's a bit of a joint killer. You know, he has had some really established names that he's beaten over the course of the last few seasons. And dangerous, dangerous player. And particularly in these qualifiers as well. Well, he's over the line in this frame. Snooker's needed. So we're going to take you around all the tables just to establish who's playing where. And table three... It's a very interesting one, actually. Zhou Yu Long and Jack Jones. Now, of course, Jack Jones was the real surprise package of the qualifiers, along with CJ Wee last year. He uh, beat Barry Hawkins, and then he got to the Crucible. He beat Ali Carter and Neil Robertson. 
lost in the quarters narrowly to Mark Allen. So Jack Jones, every reason to feel confident here. Up against Shou Yu Long, who has not actually played at the Crucible for five years. This is a, another very tough one to sort of predict, I think. But Jack Jones impressed with his temperament, certainly last year. Still in the early stages of this frame. Yeah, and of course, a lot of the players will be, you know, and particularly Jack Jones, you know, the memories of that great run last year to the Crucible and particularly, you know, beating Neil Robertson, you know, a former champion there. All those, those memories are good to sort of to go back to, you know, and particularly in these qualifiers that, you know, they've, they've had that experience beating the big names and they sort of, uh, they can stand to you, you know, but he's a very, very steady player. But Zhao Yulong, of course, David, as we all know, you know, he's been climbing the rankings very, very steadily. And uh, one of the players that you would expect to break into the top 16 very, very soon. OK, well, it's early stages of that one. Table four, actually, they finished the first frame there. Lou Hyacin against Jensen Kendrick. Now, of course, Kendrick is on an unbelievable run. He sits 1-0 to Lou Hyacin. But from the first qualifying round, you know, he's not had a good season, poised to be relegated. But if he qualifies for the Crucible, he gets a tour card. So it's a big... Uh, obviously, to qualify <laughs> would be massive, but there's that as well. Yeah, that is a big carrot isn't it dangling for all these players who the are on the periphery the of dropping out of the tour that if they do qualify that they can get a, a two-year card and uh, Jason Kendrick of course one of those he's had a great run so far won some fabulous matches and uh, yeah well he's gonna have it all to do against Liu Hao Chan very very steady player OK, well, that's uh, table four. Table five, actually, the, there's at the tail end of. It's uh, Stephen Maguire, Yuan Sijun. Now, this is a, another... I mean, I keep saying it, but fascinating, because Maguire, very experienced campaigner at the Crucible, twice semi-finalist. He's played there 19 times. Yuan Sijun looking to get there for the first time. But as we pick it up, the frame has, in fact, uh, concluded. Big Yamba Hass in the middle there. Uh. Steve Maguire, 19 times at the Crucible. I think Jan has been at the Crucible probably a little bit more than that. but And he's still going strong. Still one of the best referees in the business. Great servant to the game, Jan Verhaas. Yeah, that frame was won by uh, Yuan Sijun with a break of 76. Uh, table, si table six, I think, has also just finished. We will, I promise you, get the live action in, but we just want to go around each match. Now, this is Stuart Bingham and Lee Louis Heathcote, another... Very experienced. I mean, you know, he's a world champion, Stuart Bingham, mm. against someone trying to get there <coughs> for the first time. Bingham's won the opening frame there, but it would be so special, wouldn't it, for someone like Louis to to walk out of the cruise. But a lot of the snooky he plays is quite anonymous. It's in qualifiers. Yeah. But, you know, that is the big stage. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, uh, I mean, well, he couldn't have picked a tougher match, really, uh, against a former champion, of course. Bags of experience. But he's played well this week. I've watched a little bit of Louis Heathcote. Um, particularly against Oliver Lyons, he had a really good match against him. Uh, he was playing on the table next to me actually in his in his first match. But yeah, he's really really good, and uh, it's going to be a good test for him. Okay, we'll just go to table seven, and there's a <laughs> talk about experience. Here's Mark Davis. Now he actually holds the record most times qualified, 11. He's 51 years of age, one of 250 somethings. We'll get to the other one in a minute. But Mark Davis playing Ricky Walden. This is uh, this could be very close, couldn't it? This one. Yeah, yeah. It's one of these matches. <laughs> you just don't know which way it's going to go. I mean, Ricky Wallen a lot more success than Mark Davis. There's no doubt about that. But Mark Davis, very, very experienced, very, very experienced, and still playing some great snooker. He was my first round opponent, Dave, all those years ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ten eight. I wow. beat him 10-8 in the very first round, 1997. It's the first chance I got to mention that number. What took you so long? <laughs> I'm starting to sound like Dennis now. <clears throat> well, we remember last year, because Mark Davis, he needed, to, we thought at the time, to beat Joe Perry in this round to keep his tour card. He lost 10-9 on the black, but, of course, some more places became available. But that was an extraordinarily uh, dramatic day. And, he, of course, as I say, he's used to it. But 11 times qualified, that speaks for itself. Hopefully we'll uh, 
get the scores up, but there's not much in it in this frame. And this is frame, uh, this is, sorry, table eight. This is the other 50-something, actually 52-year-old Dominic Dale against her Go Chang from China, who's uh, obviously trying to book his debut. So a real contrast here, the experienced Dominic Dale against a rookie who's had a good season, but Dominic hasn't played at the Crucible for 10 years. So this would be massive for him. He's playing good stuff this season. We have an eclectic mix, don't we, of experience again, sort of uh, the young guys coming through. And what a big match for both players, of course. Oh, with all these are all big matches, you know, to get to the Crucible, you know, the pressure. As I was saying, you know, you could feel the tension even in the practice room, you know. There's not as much sort of banter, chats, it's all down to business and there's a lot of nerves in there, as you can imagine. Yeah, Dominic Dale won that frame, so we've, we've seen every table, but we're going to go back to table one. It's a big crowd in here, and uh, this is a great match to, ha to have a ringside seat it's for. Yeah. Oh, we, we're picking up this up at a key moment. He's, he's obviously missed twice. He's got to hit it this time, otherwise it's one each. Yeah, but you can't be obstructed by a red, so it's, it's the, the target of it. So it's not, it's not that, it is a warning, yeah. But you can't be blocked by a red. If you look at this one. Yeah, he's on a he's on a full ball. The referee is saying you can't be blocked by red. So, so he, red he can see he can see a full ball red. red. Yeah. So he has to be warned because he's missed it twice. And uh, he must hit the red this time if he fails. Without hitting the red, then he'll lose the frame. So uh he's gotta be careful here. Paul Collier issuing the warning, he'll be refereeing the final in a few weeks' time. Yeah, and what a wonderful send-off it will be for Paul Collier. You know, another, as I said, I mentioned Jan Vahas, but Paul Collier, one of those great servants to the game over the years. And finishing, refereeing the final of the World Championship this year. As indeed Brendan Moore did last year before retiring. Jack Lazowski was superb uh, in his last round. He made four centuries against Lu Hong Yu. But this is a different sort of match. He's playing someone very experienced, as we've said, in the World Championship. One. 17, so he just missed out on a seeding this year. He's yeah, such a lovely lad, isn't he, Jack? Is there, um, what a talent. I know he's sort of, the confidence has sort of waned a little bit this season, but, you know, if he gets his confidence up well, you know, it's just a, a pleasure and a joy to watch. That one's gone astray. Now, is he on this red into the middle? He wasn't playing for the, the table has run very, very fast. Maybe on this red. Yeah, good shot. He could only play for the blue there, up into the green pocket. So a little bit of pressure on this because he knows he's going to be leaving a red should he miss. So it's a shot you really want to get early, early on in this match. Yeah, he's seen obviously Matthew Stevens start brilliantly, and he needs to show that same positivity. Like, I think it's going to be that sort of match. I mean, quite often they're scrappy affairs in qualifiers, but sometimes it's sort of established from early on what sort of match it's going to be. Matthew's had a 1-3-5 already. 11. Certainly, if he qualified, he'd be one of the players you'd want to avoid. 18. Very dangerous. Beat Neil Robertson there two years ago. Got to the quarters, just lost out to Higgins in a decider.
Yeah, and I think if <coughs> anybody in the top 16, this is one of the matches they'll be all keeping their eyes on because whoever gets through, it's one of those players that they'd like to avoid in the draw. A oh, lovely shot. Really nice shot there from Lazowski. Known full well, he was always going to be on this red into the right corner, but look at that. Brought some more reds into play. Beautifully executed. And a really good chance now to try and uh, respond with a big break. Yeah, he got to the semis in Belfast this season, but otherwise it's been disappointing. He didn't qualify for the World Open, so his sort of fate was sealed because it meant he couldn't get into the Tour Championship. But form comes and goes, you know, we've seen that with other players. We, everyone knows how good he is. We saw it in the last round. Clearly be disappointed now if he doesn't win the frame here. He's got the black on its spot, reds available. Could be 39. a century in response. Yeah, and it just shows you the importance. You know, when you have the opportunity, these great players do. When when they get the opportunity, they go into the pack, develop the reds. Just makes the break so much easier for him. Ooh, well, oh, it just held up just enough. <coughs> just stopped in his tracks there. 47. Taught the cue ball, it travelled too far there you see just about on the red We'll just stay on this 56. for now, just to see if he makes uh, the ton. But looks like he's going to win the frame, just a couple more pots needed. 64. Yeah, just this black to seal the frame, but what a start in this match. Sentry, Matthew Stevens in the first. And by all accounts, you'd expect <coughs> Jack Lizowski to respond with a century here. Great Seven start. One. Well, what a start. 135, Matthew Stevens. And uh, Jack Lazowski is ever making things look so easy here. So black for the century. There we go. What a start. <laughs> well, they were right, these uh, guys, to get here for the 
start of this match. They've seen back to back well, centuries. It's just a just wonderful break and a wonderful start from both players. And hopefully, start as you mean to go on. This could be one of the best last frame judgment day matches that we're ever likely to see. If it keeps going at this rate, Dave. That's right. I mean, you, you get some matches that are scrappy, but this is the exact opposite, isn't it? This is just brilliant. Someone's going to have to play really well here to get through, and someone's probably going to play really well and not get through in this one. That's why it's on the main table. 124. 130. 137, and the frame's up disaster. Well, we're with uh, Jack Jones and Joey Long. Jones has won the first frame here.
58. Well, this is a terrific break from Jack Jones. As I say, he's got the pedigree after last year. He must be confident coming in. Zhou Yu Long, of course, won 10 0 against James Cahill in the last round. So it was a thumping victory. Jack Jones beat his good friend Jamie Clark. Remember, whoever gets through, they don't know they're going to play until Thursday morning. The draw's about a quarter to nine local time. Top 16 seeds in one hat and the qualifiers in another. Stuart Bingham here. Black ball game, obviously. No scores up yet, so a little bit blinded, but obviously pink and black needed. It's for 2 0. Could easily have been out straight through in a decider. Back to table one. Where we've had an exchange of centuries between Matthew Stevens and Jack Lazowski. Matthew Stevens, runner up to Mark Williams in 2000, and Sean Murphy in 2005. He was ahead in both. There were chances to, to win them both, but just wasn't to be. Been in various other semi finals as well, there. So he does have a, a lot of pedigree in this world championship. Oh, one he's just stretching for. Matthew Stevens, 29. Yeah, go back to that final again. Sean Morphy, when he was ahead, and he, didn't he have a blue that he played left handed? Blue, pink, and black left. And from then on, Sean took over and ended up, of course. Famously winning this World Championship. What a final it was. Good opening pot from Lazowski. Now he's just coming around to have a look at that red. Just above the black is a potable. This shot will tell us a, a little story. Not quite sure it is. No, definitely not. So he's playing for the red. It's just left of the pink spot into this bottom left corner pocket. And if he has a chance, he could try and get on the black here. Six. And try and pot the black and release the red away from the black spot. Oh, 
I just wanted to show you table four because Jensen Kendrick is on this incredible run through this tournament. He started in round one. Bayou Lu had that massive comeback against him. He held on, won a respot to win 10 7. Beat Ben Wollaston 10 8. Jordan Brown 10 5. He's up against Lou Hyshen. And if he were to qualify, obviously it'd be his debut, but he was to keep his tour card. And as we pick it up, He's 49 in front, 43 on, so looking good for one each. What a story, Ken. Amazing story. Uh, absolutely amazing. I mean, you, you reeled off. Uh, even that boy, Lou, you, Lou he, he, uh, I think he needed a snooker, didn't he, in that frame that he won in, uh, on the, uh, was it Respot Black? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, you mentioned Jordan Brown. I mean, experienced player, Welsh Open a winner a couple of years ago. To beat him, well, what a, and a chance on the precipice of keeping his tour card for another two years. So well played so far for Jason Kendrick. Lovely lad. Just to say, obviously, uh, we, as ever on Judgment Day, welcome any comments from wherever you're watching around the world. So uh, do contact us on what I still call Twitter, but it's actually called X. Um, you can contact myself, at Dave Hendon. That's at Dave Hendon. Ken is at Ken Doherty 1997 and Rob is at Rob Walker TV or send your, your uh, tweets to at we are WST and let us know where you're watching <coughs> and what are your thoughts who's going to come through who do you want to come through and any thoughts about the World Championship itself yeah it was great actually getting the comments from people last year wasn't it on on X <laughs> Twitter we're old school we keep called it Twitter but yeah it's it, for people around the world like you know it was quite quite amazing uh, you know watching it and all four corners of the world uh, they're all watching it live this morning it's so interesting for everybody it's so exciting oops what happened there Robbie Williams Seven. Well, we're going to go to table five, where Yuan Sijun is 1-0 up on Steve Maguire. He's 14 points ahead here. There you see, 66-52, chance to win a tight one. And for all the centuries that we've seen, and we've seen plenty, these frames, these close ones, can make a big difference. The yellow is safe at the moment, but uh, you shouldn't need that. Yeah, very impressive player, Wan Sijon, one of the young breed of Chinese talents emerging. Plays, of course, here in Sheffield in Ding Zhong Wee's academy. Fell off the tour, came back through Q skill, and uh, has been impressive since. Played him in the UK qualifiers earlier on to, to qualify. And uh, yeah, he made three centuries in the best of 11 against me, Dave. Really, really strong player when he gets going. It'd be a match for Steve Maguire, as we're already seeing here. Black and red just required. Won't need that yellow that's safe. Yeah, he's a dangerous player, all right. While we just watch this, I'll just give you... We've had a, a few little technical issues, 51. including Ken spilling his water, but we won't go into <laughs> that. Um, so I'll just give you the latest scores, and then we'll try and get into this properly. So it's one each, Jack Lazowski and Matthew Stevens. 1-0 Robbie Williams over Chris Wakelin. 2-0 Jack Jones over Zhou Yu Long. One each, Lou Hyshen and Jensen Kendrick. Going 2-0 here, clearly, Yuan Sijun over Steve Maguire. 2-0 Stuart Bingham over Louis Heathcote. 1-0 Mark Davis over Ricky Walden. And 2-0 Dominic Dale over her Hugh Chang. And uh, here, Wan Sijun winning, as I say, what could be uh, an important early frame. We saw yesterday, actually, the second frame, Neil Robertson's Zach That kind of seemed to just sort of set a trend. It was very edgy early on, but once Neil won that, he'll be up tomorrow, of course. But once he won that, he went off into the distance. I think that's the boring question, you know. I and mean, we might get a little bit of reaction from, from uh, people on, on Twitter or X, you know, the, what, what would they think? Is it more nervous for the younger guys to get to the Crucible for the first time, or for the older guys who have bags experience of being at the Crucible, they've tasted it for years. Is it more nerve-wracking for those players, the more experienced players, or is it more nerve-wracking for the younger players? I'd, I'd be interested to know. From my own experience, I think it's probably a bit of both, you know, and uh, I think when you've tasted the Crucible, oh, you know, you've been there, you just love it so much that you just want to get back there. So 
in there, but want to get there for the very first time. It, yeah. It's sort of half and half, isn't it? But it'd be interesting to see what the people, what they think. Yeah, I mean, the older players have the memories, obviously, and, and as I say, the older you get, you, you don't know if you're going to get back there. This is table two, and we're joining it in a very nasty spot here for Robbie Williams because uh, he's won the first, but he's snooked behind the brown against Chris Wakelin. When, when the qualifying was at Ponds Forge, he never seemed to lose there. He, he qualified three years running. He must have been gutted when they moved it to the, yeah, uh, the English yeah. Institute of Sport. Well, this is just a horrible snooker to get out of, isn't it? Now, if you could just come across one cushion, just miss the blue, the cue balls should slide off the second cushion. There you go, there's the slide. Now, has he got the pace? It looks like it. Oh, it's very close. It is very close. Yeah, great shot. What a shot, Robbie Williams. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. The judgment there was yeah. spot on, wasn't it? He must have had an angel looking down. Oh, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Shouldn't say that. It's too, I'll leave them for Phil Yates. I'll let you off, Ken. It's, it's early yet. <laughs> so this frame, very much in the balance. leave that for the now because Louis Heathcote here another player trying to book his debut at the Crucible and this is a break he's on a break of uh, well 80, 82 he's 2-0 down to Stuart Bingham as you can see but just lost that black ball frame but has bounced back very impressively here I did his match actually against uh, Oliver Lyons I thought he was impressive in that and then he beat Elliot Slesser who's been having a great season 10-8 so held off a comeback from Slesser there he's 7-2 up actually he must have been so relieved and now what a chance to not only qualify, but to do so beating a former champion. So go to the Crucible full of confidence if he could win this match. And this is good stuff from Louis, from the fine uh, snooker city of Leicester. Oh, no miss. Bruce Wakelin, four. Let's see if he can make this century. Surely going to. Another Leicester man tomorrow, Joe O'Connor, of course. Tom Ford seeded there, as obviously is Mark Selby. Ben Wollaston was defeated in, in the qualifying by Jensen Kendrick, as I mentioned. So big breaks already flying in. Okay. Louis Heathcote's highest break on tour is 136, so <coughs> he could actually just beat that here. A quality player, isn't he? And, you know, that's the, the good thing about some of the players who've got, like, two or three matches under the belt that... You know, they're coming into these matches pretty warm, full of confidence. Joe Bingham, of course, came through that tough match against Stuart Carrington, 7-3 down. But Louis C. Colt, yeah, lovely player. Fell off the tour, had to come back, but, yeah, very impressive so far in these qualifiers. Well, as I say, if he clears up, this will be his highest ever break on tour. So that is some way to start, particularly having lost the first two to a very experienced campaigner in Stuart Bingham. So come on, Louis, knock in the pink, get on the black for a 1-3-8. That uh, would be a nice hallmark for him, wouldn't it? Come on, Louis. Let's see what you can do here. No, unlucky. Unlucky, but great break, and he's off the mark. Ask you 23. Back to table one then, and uh, we had an exchange of centuries, but the close frames are often the key ones, aren't they? We're going to see plenty of those. We've got one here, Matthew Stevens, obviously the pink the issue for him but it's a chance here to nick this one Two. this was, oh, this was pink a miss pink there. wow that was poor and he only needed the pink um, wow so this is well takes Five. on even more significance and importance for Matthew Stevens this if he could 
as you said, Dave, the pink is in a safe place, but for the double, it's not too bad. And that's what Matthew Stevens there. He's just come around, had a look at it. It's perfect for a back cross double. The cue ball will be going towards the black as well, which helps the fact that it's in bulk. So if he gets on this blue nicely. Oh, that's a poor shot. What is he doing there? Nice. He's okay. He's got a little bit lucky there. He's played for the blue into the right centre, but the cue ball has travelled far enough to have a straightforward blue into the yellow pocket. Still can play for that double on the pink. So here's the shot, back cross double, as I said, cue ball naturally going towards that ball cushion and be perfect on the black. Big shot this, and we saw that miss from Jack Lazowski, that missed pink, he only needed the pink. This will hurt them, chance for Matthew. Land an early blow, I think he's missed it. Oh, you don't want to miss it on that side, That's Matthew, you don't want to miss it on that side, because the pink is on, it's cuttable. He just needs the pink. Obviously, cue ball running round is what he's got to worry about, but Matthew Stevens is worried about that. Just catching the knuckle to leave this cut on. So, already a big shot, this. I think it's just a bit concerned. Maybe the cue ball would be going towards this bottom left corner pocket. He's got to be careful of the in off. Well. Maybe it wasn't cuttable, but he hasn't hit that well. <coughs> he has not hit that well. Now, the only saving grace, if it is one, that this might be too straight for Matthew to get the cue ball all the way back up for black. Although he's shaping up pretty quick, so maybe he's got a, a slight angle on the pink. Yeah, slight angle. But not Six. ideal. Very, very missable, this. Big shot, though, early on. Yeah, big shot, early in the match. And it's not there. Well, again. <laughs> I mean, he nearly went in off, actually, but this is a thin black he's left, but that was his chance. And in it goes. So Jack Lazowski steals it, and as I say, for the centuries, frames like that psychologically make a much bigger difference. Now, hopefully we can get to table eight, because that's also coming to a conclusion. This is Dominic Dale and her Guo Chang, who's hoping to become, obviously, a debutant. Dominic uh, is, as you can see, 2-0 up, but four, uh, 14 points to the good for the man in the glove there. Yeah, another young Chinese prospect from Victoria Snooker Academy here in the middle of Sheffield. Big shot for him here to get off the mark. If it goes in, he should win the frame. Oh, it just wiggled. It just wiggled in, but it's in. 15 ahead. Yeah, he's a rookie, first season professional, but he's been really impressive. He's had, he's had some good wins, got to the quarterfinals of the British Open. He's already beaten Ross Muir and Anthony McGill, of course. That was the big win. McGill is such a seasoned... If he comes good at any point, he's in the World Championship, yeah. but not this year. Yeah, what an impressive win for Go Chang against Anthony McGill. As you said, very seasoned, professional, and particularly at the World Championship. This is what you want to do. You want to get off the mark early, you know, and this, even though they, as I said, best of 19s, but 
so important just to get that first frame on the board settle down into the match I watched a bit of his match against Ross Muir and uh, even though he was behind there he's very impressive in the second half of that match eventually winning 10-8 in the end but yeah he's got lo lovely style as well his whole setup is pretty good one of six players who could make their debut for playing today so very exciting for him but also for Dominic as well trying to get back there first time in 10 years 2-1 now hopefully we can go to table two which is uh, very tight we were there earlier and the frame has not been uh, resolved it's uh, this is table two this is table seven but we don't mind watching Ricky Walden and Mark Davis one each here Here's table two. Here you can see the level on the yellow. Now the yellow's by the pink, so it's causing a few problems. 51 each. You're going to get frames like this, aren't you, today? And that's kind of what we love, isn't it? We, d you know, we like to see the total clearances, but the sort of scrappy, tense frames, Ken, is what we enjoy. As well. Yeah, and you know, there, as I said, a lot of nerves, a lot of tension out there. So you're going to get frames like this. We could be in a lot of trouble here. Wow, I don't like this next shot. If he can just avoid the pink with the yellow and try and get that cue ball. Well, he's having a look to see does the yellow actually pot. Doesn't look like it from our <laughs> angle, but if it doesn't pot, well, he could be in all sorts of trouble when he comes back to the table, Robbie Williams. But if it is potable, well, it's a good chance. Simple little snooker. He's got to avoid the pink with the yellow and just nestle that cue ball in behind the pink. Well, I tell you, it's going to be extremely difficult. Doesn't play that well. Yeah, a little Roy smile from Chris Wakelin, but that was a poor shot. He had a really good chance to put his opponent in all sorts of trouble there. Well, this is going to last a while, clearly, this exchange, so we'll uh, we'll drop back in on it. Well, that does change things, actually. He's he's played the shot to, to bring things into play. Bit of a risk, really. You're not quite sure where they're going to finish. So uh, let's just stay with this, in fact, now that the yellow's come away from the pink. I had visions of that being there for another hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, chance, Robbie Williams, try and get the cue ball back into Balkan. Hidden behind the pink. Bit short of pace. I can tell you, Joe, Lo Joe Long's had a century against Jack Jones, so it's 2 1 to Jack Jones there. Steve McGuire's pulled one back against Yuan Sijun. 2 1 to Yuan Sijun. Thank you. We've had a few messages already, and uh, we'll do our best to get to them. Brian Gosling is watching from the English Riviera, enjoying the coverage. We've got to Callum saying the he thinks the pressure's on the young guys to answer your question, Ken. Yeah. It's a lifelong dr uh, dream of reaching the crucible, and it's only a matter of frames away. Yeah, possibly, but I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what the poll, if we had a little poll, it'd be interesting to see what the public think. Is it more pressure on the, the guys trying to get there for the first time? My goodness, I remember my first time all the way, I think it was 1992, Dave, against Cliff Wilson. Do you remember Cliff Wilson? What yeah, a character. Brilliant player. Yeah, beat him 10-6, I think, in the end. But what a character and what a player. And you never, ever forget your first time there playing at the Crucial. Managed to play Steve Davis, very first round.
Batman Lula in Germany. Uh, he's very interested in Mark Davis against Ricky Walden. Big Mark Davis fan. After last year, what happened, obviously, looked like he was off the tour, but he managed to keep his place after all. He's playing Ricky Walden on table seven, and we're going to... Here we are. Now, Mark's on a break here of 57. It's one each in the match. It's not uh, Dominic, as you can see. It's Mark Davis, who's holds the record for most qualifications, 11. It was a bit awkward for Joe Perry, actually. He's a big friend of his, and, of course, he beat him, thought he'd relegated him. So it sort of didn't sort of over-celebrate qualifying, but all was well in the end. Just looking to put this frame away. Two. Beat Tepchar and Nu. I mean, that was a great win in the last round. Andrew Padgett in the round before. Just seems to be so reliable in this environment. Obviously, all his experience, all the years he's been playing, must be a positive. played actually at the Crucible since 2021 he, but he made his debut there 30 years ago 1994 so I don't think he'd mind us calling him a veteran yeah in fact I, I played him well I played him twice at the Crucible the first time was 1996 he, he beat me in the very first round such a good all-round player Mark Davis Very experienced, well, good all-round game, and good temperament as well. Yeah, some players, this environment just suits them for whatever reason. Some struggle here, but Mark Davis already proving here that he's going to play his own game. May not, well, he may not be a century now. Depends on this next shot, <laughs> but either way, he's going to have won the frame. Um, he's going to be two-one in front. It, it feels like a match. It could be very tight. Although Walden actually, uh, sorry, Mark Davis actually leads the head-to-head 3-0, -head for what it's worth. Dave Williams says uh, he's looking forward to the World Championship, watching Judgment Day in anticipation, seeing who goes through. Can you mention my pal Mark Pitfield in Bolton, who's a massive fan, will be watching. Well, we've mentioned you, Mark, and you, Dave. Thanks for tuning in. 93. Ben Whitehead says, I'll be, I've been glued to qualified all week. I'd have loved to see Ken qualified. Travelling up from Essex on Monday for week one. Oh, <coughs> thank you very much. At least I've got one fan there, they haven't told you. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Hope you're enjoying the coverage. Ooh, just missed. Good break, though. Yeah, century from Mark Davis to lead by two frames to one. We saw Louis Heathcote make a century in frame three against Stuart Bingham to cut the deficit to 2 1. And uh, he's on another big break. Hopefully, we can get the end of it in frame four. Well, we're not going to. This is table five, Yuan Sejun and Steve Maguire. 2 1 to see Yuan Sejun.
little tweet from Andrew James Graham says, what a fantastic idea. Table to table coverage is. Keep the excitement of Judgment Day going. He says we should be brought into the early stages of other tournaments too. Yeah, not a bad idea. And what's Jason Kendrick's nickname? I don't Six. know whether he has a, a nickname. Andy has uh, tweeted in. I don't know whether he has a nickname. You you know all the nicknames, Dave. Has he got, well, a, has he got a nickname? No, but put it this way, if he gets to the crucible, I'm sure Rob <laughs> will, will cook one up for him. Yeah, definitely. Kai said, I'd love to see more of the davis Walder match. Well, we're trying to <coughs> go between matches, and we'll, but we'll give you highlights, and we'll give you the, the key points of all the matches as we decipher through all eight tables. Right, this is table 31. two. It's uh, with on the blue. This frame to be quite lengthy, but uh, there's five points in it. Robbie Williams 1-0 up against Chris Wakelin, so this is still only frame two. could be in <laughs> steady on Dave steady on possible chance though for Chris Wake it's certainly not an easy pot but he'll definitely take it on needs blue pink and the black Thank you. wow has he fluked it oh wow we played a good snooker. I mean, I don't know why he's disappointed about fluking it because he's on the pink into the middle. And I think he's got an angle to get down for the black. Not quite sure why he didn't take that blue one. Maybe he did, into the middle instead. <laughs> yeah, there you see, he's got an angle. Okay, cue ball and pink pretty close to each other, but he could pot this pink and get down somewhere towards the black. What a sickness for Robbie Williams, if he does. Oh, good shot this. Very, very good. And what a timely fluke from Chris Wakelin. Yeah, but particularly as it's been such a lengthy frame, and uh, for it to end like that. Well, it's not quite over yet. Obviously, he needs this, but if it does uh, go to Wakelin. That's a bit of a sickness. It's been, as I say, a long battle, but the black for one each. And he's overcut it. First Amazing. Frame, so the frame's not done. Well, you can see on his backswing how quick that was. Bit of a nervy one from Chris Wakelin. Didn't expect him to miss the black. So the black for Robbie Williams to win by just one point. More importantly, go 2 0 up. Big shot. Oh, well played, Robbie Williams. Yeah, amazing finish to that frame, 2-0, and you can see Wakelin not a happy chappy as he walks off. This is why, well, it's not just this, it's his own miss, of course. So some early pressure on the former shootout champ. 2-0 to Robbie Williams. Table 8 is Dominic Dale and her Kyo Chang, and it's 2-1, her with a chance to make it 2-2. He's, as you can see, 62 in front. Never played each other before. That's the other thing, I guess, about some of the younger players. You know, that he's, from Dominic's perspective, he'll have sort of heard about him and knows he's dangerous, but it's got no, nothing to go on in terms of having played him, what his kind of strengths and weaknesses are. But he's finding out here. Yeah, and a good response, isn't it, from the young man? Tim Hill down. Quite a good last red in that previous frame. And now on a nice... Nice little break at 57 at the moment. And almost over the line. In fact, this red will be enough. So, should be 2 2 at the interval. Well played, young man. Good stuff. How many 
people have played at the Crucible wearing a glove. There was a player years ago, Nigel Gilbert. He, he used yeah. to wear a glove, didn't he? he did, yeah. He <laughs> used to, and he used to bring his own rest everywhere, would you believe? Yeah. He never liked the, the rest that wore a snooker provided, so he used to have his own rest. He used to take around, a bit like Eddie Charlton back in the day. Anyway, if he does wear a glove, I'm sure they'll turn up the heat at the Crucible. Won't be cold. Just to run down the latest scores then, Lazowski leading 2-1 against Matthew Stevens. He's looking like two each there. It's 2-0 Robbie Williams, as we know, against Chris Wakelin. 2-1 Jack Jones over Zhou Yulong. 2-1 Lou Heishen over Jensen Kendrick. 2-1 Yuancy Jun over Stephen Maguire. He's missed that, but it shouldn't matter. Well, 77 in front, three snookers needed. I mean, Dominic will try and obviously get rid of four of the reds, I guess. The free ball is always there in the background. Yeah, Dominic was sort of talking about retirement a couple of years ago, but here he is. He had a good season, won a lot of matches, and I'm sure he sort of felt maybe his crucible days were over. He just does a lot of commentating now, but chance to get back there for the first time in a decade. He's such a great character, and for all his eccentricities, he is a wonderful snooker player and a great snooker brain. Very, very clever player. Tough man to beat. I wonder what's happening on table one. Looks really, really close over there. 23 points behind Jack Lizowski. They're on the brown. I might try and get over to table one when we can. But yeah, here we are. Yeah. A bit similar to the previous frame, except the shoe is on the other foot now for Lizowski. Matthew Stevens had a chance to go 2 1 up. It was the pink that he failed on, and ultimately the black. But how is Lizowski going to get from pink to black here? Very tough along that ball cushion. It's almost where that golden ball was, wasn't it, in Saudi Arabia, yeah, which yeah. no one no one had the chance to pop with the super maximum. I wonder will he try and move it? He tried to move it. It looks good. Oh, what a shot! Well, that shot of the match so far. I think it's cuttable. And I don't think the cue ball will go close to this bottom right corner pocket. I think he'll, yeah, off two cushion. Oh, has he hit it too hard? Has he hit it too hard? 20. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, uh, maybe they were sort of conning us with those two centuries in the first two frames because the last two have been, as Jimmy would say, Shredsville stuff. Well, we already saw Chris Wakeland on table two miss a black with the rest. Big shot, big frame to go into the mid-session interval. He's missed it, and he's left it. Yeah, incredible. Jack Lizowski, 20. These last two frames, Matthew Stevens would have felt he threw the last one away, but what a lifeline he's been thrown here to level up at 2-2. Two -two. Here it goes. So, a dramatic match, high quality. 
back-to-back -back, back -back centuries and then back-to-back -back black ball finishes. Already bringing the drama, these two and two each, as they go to the mid-session interval. Wiley, please, as other games on. Bit of noise. Of course, a lot of the people leaving from table one next door. This is table two, Robbie Williams. Dramatic black ball frame to go 2 0 up. So he's just taking his time, I don't blame him. A lot of people have to go out that side into the corner to get back out into the foyer. While they're on their little break, so. But it's an important stage here for Robbie. He's got a blue in and out of ball, get back up for the Reds. Trying to disturb the black here. Oh, uh, lovely, great attempt. I just wonder, Ken, if we can just go to table three, because uh, Zhou Yilong has a chance to go 2-2 two -two with Jack Jones. So they're a little further along. Here we go. So he's 10 points in front. Yeah, 17 in front, so he's not going to need blue and pink, which are awkward. Would be a dangerous qualifier for sure. He uh, hasn't played at the Crucible since 2019, which is a bit of a surprise, really. But, you know, he couldn't have played any better, really, in the last round. 10-0 over James Cahill, of course, has a reputation of being a Crucible giant killer. He's win over O'Sullivan. Yeah, really good player, Zhao Yulong. Once again, another player from lives in Sheffield, based himself here, was up in Darlington, came back down to Sheffield, beginning of the season, back to Dings Academy. And his practice partner actually would be Wan Si John, who's on the other table. Wu Yiza, of course, is in that academy as well. Another practice partner of his is Judgment Day tomorrow. Had a fine win over Tian Pang Fei last night. But yeah, I totally agree with you, Dave. I mean, Zhou Yulong or Jack Jones, whoever comes through this will be a tough opponent for any of those top 16 players. This frame looks done. Where are we head to next, though? Table five, I think, is uh, also interesting. Yuancy John and Steve Maguire. Yeah, that's 2-2. Uh, two, two. Now, here we go. So it's 2-1 to Yuancy John. He's 31 in front in the next frame, 43 on. Maguire missed out last year. It wasn't a comfortable thing when the world... You can't even go on holiday these days because it's on TV all around the world. It's uncomfortable. Lewis uh, has, he, has a message to say that uh, Yuan Sijun, Zhao Gudong and Zhang Zhun all share a house in Sheffield. So if they all qualify, it'd be some sort of record. <laughs> well, yeah, it'd be unfortunate, I guess, if two qualified and the other didn't, maybe. Yeah, it'd be... Uh, Quite dangerous qualifier. I know we've said that a lot, but Yuan Sijun has a good record of a lot of wins over top players. This season, he's best uh, a run to the Northern Ireland Open quarterfinals. <coughs> yeah, got a nice little tweet from Cameron. Said, uh, loving the coverage, watching from outside Edinburgh, and surprisingly very sunny up there. Well, that's good news. It's been... Rain and cats and dogs in Sheffield, but it's a little bit sunnier today, thankfully. At least the, the rain doesn't affect play. Although it did once a long time ago, didn't it? Where 
the water came through the roof. Yeah, that was in the 70s. <laughs> Chrissy says, I'm watching in Gosport near Portsmouth, loving the Judgment Day coverage, hoping Dominic wins and Dave Gilbert wins tomorrow. And it's great to meet Ken in the snooker exhibition in Gosport last August. You oh get yeah. about, Ken. <laughs> yes, yeah, so well travelled. A bit like Alan Wicker. <laughs> A Judy Chalmers, more like. Now. A lot of people out there might not remember Alan Wicker. No, <laughs> we do. Yeah, unfortunately I do. Anyway, 37 <laughs> the lead here, so 35 on. So one snooker needed, but... Only one, so not necessarily done yet. Yeah, Chrissy, uh, uh, oh sorry, Cameron up in Edinburgh says, uh, nice to see the Chinese referees officiating as well in the UK. Yeah, being given a good chance. And I see uh, Peggy here and Queenie as well, who, who refereed up in uh, Manchester, the Tour Championship, so it's great to see them over. Yeah, and a word for the referees and the officials, because they're long days, aren't they, here? And, you know, you're never quite sure how many hours you'll be doing, but you'll, you'll do your, your share over the two weeks, just last before you get to the Crucible. So yeah. they've done a grand job. And, of course, they don't have a chance to sit down, do they? They're standing all the time. And, and of course, they've got to keep the concentration. So it's a tough old job. Well, fair play to them. They're doing a great job. And the markers as well. Uh, Rom says, uh, Ken, before you come up with a nickname for Kendrick, could you get his name right, please? It's, it's Jensen. Well, I did say Jensen, not Jason. It's he your says, accent. It's my accent. It's my Irish accent. Sorry about that. But I do know Jensen because I played him uh, recently, and uh, it's great to see him play so well as McGuire. Well, as he laid a snooker, he's had an anxious look, uh, almost touching the yellow, but I think it's just enough room. Slight swerve. Yeah, it could have been nastier. Yeah, it's that situation where you actually don't feel it should be his frame, but, you know, there are some nasty spots for snookers. The black, not in a great position, and, of course, Maguire ideally would need the black as well, but look at the yellow, the pink. You know, there's some nasty spots there if you were to trap him in behind either one of those. And here's a tweet from Tom Lewis. Uh, Ken, is the lager and the wine and the food expensive at the Crucible? I mean, why is he asking me a question like that? Well, why should I know? Well, you never pay for anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very surprised that you, Tom, there, asked me a question like that. Rob has just brought a lovely cup of coffee. Thank you, Rob. Again, no money changed hands <laughs> No, 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 no. I'll get him a, I'll get him a Guinness later, don't worry. Ben Smith says, loving the coverage, perfect lunchtime treat. There you go, there's your little shout out, Ben. Keep enjoying, keep your comments coming to us on uh, on X or Twitter, or whatever, and tell us where you are and where you're watching it from. If you're skiving off work or if you're in work and still skiving, but are still enjoying the coverage, let us know. I wonder if we can just go to table four because uh, we've been talking about Jensen Kendrick. This uh, the snooker needed here. We'll be back if Maguire gets it. But table four, Jensen Kendrick with a chance to make it 2 2 with Lou Hyacin. Here he is. Been the sort of unlikely, one of the unlikely stars of the qualifying, hasn't he? It's an amazing story. And he had such a disappointing season. And he's poised here potentially to make it 2 2. Okay, well, he ran out of position, so this frame in the balance. It feels a big one already. Lou Heishen 
He's a quite an experienced campaigner. He's only a young man, but he's played at the Crucible three times already. Lou Heish and uh, it's actually one of the few players to have a victory over Ronnie O'Sullivan this season. He got to the semi-finals of the Women Open. World number 26. The most uh, Chinese players in one year at the Crucible is six. I checked this with Tai Chen Zi, the photographer earlier. But uh, of course we've already guaranteed Ding, Jun Wei and Zhang Anda and there's a, a crop of players who could qualify. In fact, uh, Si Jol Wei's playing Wu Yiza tomorrow, so obviously one of those has to go through. We've got Zhang Jun, who uh, is a rookie pro, obviously her Go Chang as well, Yuan Sijun, Lu Haishan here, Zhou Yilong. So there's a lot of Chinese players who potentially could make it. Now where's this red going to finish? Is it going to come past the middle? Mm. Oh, just that little bump, wasn't it, after... Just that little knuckle of the middle pocket. It's just left this red on. It's still a very delicate shot. It could roll off. It's got to play a dead weight. Could easily roll off, yeah. <coughs> and that's nothing to do with the tables. That's just going against the nap of the cloth because the nap of the cloth is brushed down towards, of course, the black spot and this black top cushion. So the, when you're going against the nap, it sometimes can veer offline. And that's exactly what's happened there. Corey Cook, uh, Kenny's watching in New Zealand. Just mm. getting close to midnight. Woo years are my dark horse this year. Well, wow. and we have Tala. I think that's the way it's pronounced. Watching from South Africa. Right. Loving the coverage. Well, I hope you're enjoying it. Reese is in Neath, cheering on the Welsh boys. Had the pleasure of meeting Ken an exhibition in Neath, in Neath a year ago. It's just people just meet your... You're like a <laughs> member of the royal family. <laughs> yeah. Jensen Kendrick pots a terrific red. So yeah, that was a good shot, wasn't it? Yeah, another chance to take the frame. If you've met Ken anywhere, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> might be a long list. Please don't start that. Oh, my goodness. It could be anywhere. I could be quite uh, embarrassed by some of the replies there. Uh, Lee Clark says, why doesn't Jack Jones wear a tie? Well, he has a, a doctor's note, just like Stephen Maguire. Cue ball just ran on slight, but he's okay. There's another of the fine referees, Peggy, from China, doing a great job. So 21 points in the lead. Jensen, Kendrick, not Jason. Oh, he's missed it when he hasn't got away with it. That was a nervy one from Jensen. That was, he hangs his head as he goes back to his chair slumping it I presume 21 points the difference so he's going to need all remaining colours after this red red colour and all remaining colours including that black to win this frame we might see another black ball game here though already seen no, three black ball games so far could be another one yeah, and if it's nervy now, what's it going to be like in the second session? Remember, all these matches conclude from 5 o'clock local time. I <laughs> should beat Daniel Wells, 10-8 in the last round. Three. Well, there's a good question, Dave. You, you can answer this. James Snooker Nation has tweeted in as, oh, well, he's just missed the yellow. I can't believe it. Yeah. Another twist, 18 in it, so only, he only needs uh, yellow and green here. 
Yeah, James Snooker Nation. What is the strangest snooker rule or situation in a match that you have seen and how did it get resolved? We'll come to that. Have a little think about that, Dave, because I'm sure you will know a few of them. But this is a big shot for Jensen Kendrick. Green to go 23 points in the lead with 22 on. Having missed the red earlier. Can he go to the interval 2-2? Two -two? Yeah, well played. Well played. Well, he was let off the hook massively. And, of course, he could have been thinking about that misread during the 15-minute break. But now he can put it out of his mind because as long as he knocks this in, it's surely going to be his frame. Come on, give us, a, give us your answer to that question. What's the strangest situation in a match that you've ever seen? Well, it was, there was one at the Crucible. Um, Graham Dot and Mark Selby, where Graham Dot played a shot. The white was going towards the corner pocket. He put his fist in the pocket to stop the cue ball going in. And Mark Selby innocently thought he could pick the white up and put it in the D. But he was fouled by Alan Chamber in the referee because the rule is the cue ball had not left the bed of the table. So it was considered to still be in play. That was a bit odd, but that's the rule. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember, was it when Patsy Fagan played David Taylor and the cue ball was going towards the pocket yeah. and Patsy Fagan hit it with the hit the cue ball with the cue around the table and uh, where the white landed it wasn't actually more beneficial to david taylor it would have been more it would have been better for him to, if patsy had let the cue ball but of course they had to finish that he had to play from where the the cue ball finished so that was quite bizarre yeah because it could look like a concession couldn't it yeah and what about the time between D steve davis doug mountjoy where they had a re-rack on the blue after 45 minutes, yeah. which was blue, pink, and black remaining, and they had a re rack. <laughs> How about that one? Meanwhile, let, if we can go to table seven, the snooker needed here, so it looks like this frame's done. But table seven is Ricky Walden and Mark Davis, they're just in their pre interval frame, and uh, this is still live because, as you can see, there's 18 in it with 27, of course, on the, co the colours, but the colours are not exactly. They're not exactly well placed for Ricky to clear up, but he's got some sort of chance. Well, if you're putting colours in an awkward position between the grey and the black and the blue, yeah, you find it hard to put them in a to make this clearance more difficult. In fact, Ricky, he's he's got on the green here. Known full well, he can't clear it open anyway, so he's just going to play a safety shot. Try and play a snooker. But he's going to have his work cut out, he's going to win the frame. Particularly with the experience of his opponent. I do love these comments coming in through on, on Twitter, though. Do you? It's great to hear from people oh. who are watching it, no matter where they are in the world, you know, South Africa. Edinburgh, uh, even Gosport. Most of it seems to be people who've met you, Ken. I did ask, <laughs> and the, the, it's all come in. I won't read them all out. But anyway, we've got a message from Germany. Huge respect to Rob Walker for running from John O'Groats to Land's End last year. Absolutely, that was an incredible effort for charity, of course. OK, let's go to table six next. Well, we're playing a little bit of safety here. We might come back to this uh, table, but let's go to table six. What's happening over there? Yeah, this is Louis Heathcote and Stuart Bingham. They're out back out after the interval 2-2. And uh, Louis Heathcote, another player who is hoping to book a debut appearance, obviously, Stuart Bingham. You know, he's a Crucible Man champion nine years ago. 17 appearances there. Would be absolutely gutted to miss it, wouldn't he? I mean, anyone would, but we know Stuart just loves the game. He's had a difficult season. Quarterfinals in the Scottish Open, his only real high point, obviously, had to come to qualifying had to win the last three frames to beat Stuart Carrington in the previous round. Yeah, he struggled with his, his eyesight as well over the last little while. Started to try out new glasses when playing. Didn't work out for him. Not quite sure what he's got lenses now. But, but what a what a player. What a class act, Stuart Bingham. What a lovely guy to boot as well. Just, as you said, just loves the game. If there was a pro-am and anywhere, I used to see Bingham at it. He'd travel the world to play, just to play in tournaments, win tournaments, and, of course, reach the heights. Masters champion. 
and of course world champion as well Darren has uh, written morning to you both just woke up watching the great coverage here in Charlotte North Carolina would wow. love to see Dominic Dale qualify <coughs> Fellow countryman Peter Ford says, watching the great coverage here in County Sligo, Ennis Grown, know it well, what a beautiful place, right by the seaside. Nice golf course there as well. Remember, it's nine frames in this session, <coughs> so unless obviously it's slow going, someone will have an advantage coming back this evening at five o'clock. Neil Robertson made a good point, I thought. I mean, he was on table one yesterday, but it's a nice setup here. You know, it, they're not... In the past, various venues have been really tight queue because yeah. table one certainly is a lovely setup. It's just like a normal arena. Yeah, it is, yeah. And I played on table one, and I, I, I must concur. It, it, uh, yeah, it's a wonderful setup. Tables are playing really well. Uh, the crowds are being great, and... Yeah, it just feels like a proper tournament. I'm, and I got back to the old days where we were in cubicles, and it was quite, you know compact very claustrophobic crowds were quite a long way away from you you didn't sort of didn't have that real sort of uh, you know judgment day feel to it there's so much on the line but the atmosphere wasn't as good as it is now they've really done a great job with snooker and of course with the coverage as well it's excellent great for the viewers So he should be over the line now. And 3-2, uh, going along at a, a feral pace. Louis Heath got the 125 break, of course, having been 2-0 down. And no matter how disappointing a season you've had, of course, a good world championship can turn it all around. Stuart just wants to be in the draw on Thursday morning, and he would be one to avoid again with his experience there. Former winner. Nobody would be taking him lightly. Yeah, I think when you you talk about the top 16 and about the possible who they're going to play, it, Stuart Bingham is definitely one of those because he's got bags of experience. I think a lot of the top 16 players would like to play sort of freshmen debutants you know who haven't got that experience of the crucible because it, it does well it has done to a lot of players who have made it their debut at the crucible it does affect them it takes them a while to get used to it some it hasn't remember of course going back to Sean Murphy and how well he played on his debut going all the way to win it well as a qualifier uh, I'm not quite sure that was his first time at the Crucible, was it? I mean, you might tell me that. No, he, well, in fact, you'd beaten him before that. Uh, yeah. On the black. Oh, of course I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just to say hello to uh, Nico in Finland. Snoop, he says there's a no, snooker nice. boom. There's yeah. A snooker boom here with the thousands of spectators and exhibitions. Yeah, I, I spoke to uh, a Finnish journalist the other day who was telling me all about the interest in Finland, so that's good to know. And, yeah. also, and also, sorry, there's uh, we've got a viewer in got up at 5 a.m. to watch from Illinois in the USA. Wow. Yeah, played in Finland, Helsinki, a long time ago. Of course, Robin Hall, who was a uh, Finnish professional. And a really good player. Won the shootout, didn't he, Robin Hall? Excellent player. Hope he's watching. Hope he's well. And uh, great to have viewers from Finland tuning in as well. This is a century from Stuart Bingham. And now he'll be hoping, of course, to... Just open up some sort of gap coming back this evening. He's known for his scoring. I mean, that's his game. Mm. So yeah. if, he's, if he's scoring well, you know, he can beat anybody, obviously. Oh, that's a wonderful shot. That is just wonderful queuing there. Brilliant. Very good from Stuart Bingham. 126 clearance to lead Louis Heathcote 3 2. Now let's go back to table one. This has been a very interesting match. We had an exchange of centuries and then two back to back black ball frames between Jack Lazowski and Matthew Stevens. Lazowski in the balls early here in frame five. 
I suppose in a way, the two black ball frames sort of cancelled each other out in a way. Mm. What a fascinating match though, isn't it? It's really lived up to its expectation. Century from each, two black ball game. Such a wonderful talent, Lizowski. He really is. I know he's been beaten a lot of ranking finals, yet to win his first one. And of course, people, including David and myself, always remind him of it, particularly in commentary. But uh, I think he's one of those guys, David, isn't he? He's just such a nice guy as well that, you know, we'd all love to see him win his first, you know, his first big one. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's two things. One, the, the way he plays is delightful but yeah he's a, such a, a smashing guy as well but sometimes that, that's not necessarily an advantage in sport 54 now we were uh, as Jack uh, attempts to take this frame out we were with this frame a moment ago Mark Davis and Ricky Walden this is how the frame concluded Mark Davis uh, after a long battle on the green got in and was able to take it out. So these were just the last moments. Mark Davis three, Ricky Walden one. That would be something, wouldn't it, for someone who looked like he'd been relegated a year ago. Three one. They'll be back in 15 minutes. So let's uh, go back to Jack. 61. As he attempts to win this frame, the black to lead by 68 with 67 on. We've got some views in Australia. Hoping that Neil Robertson gets through. One in Perth, one in Sydney. Greg Jenkins in Sydney. He says, I'd also like to see Nopon Sengam go deep. That was a wonderful moment yesterday, wasn't yeah. it, the maximum? Yeah, that's such a... Yeah, what a player. Such a humble guy. Actually saw him in the restaurant last 69. night with his wife and uh, Bipad and Mink. And, uh, yeah, we're all enjoying their food. And went over to congratulate him on another wonderful break. And, of course, he's going to be in Judgment Day tomorrow. And the chance, 76. if he does make another maximum, of course, you have to make two maximums now to get £147,000. So will he be there with a chance? Swift 76 Jack from Lazowski to lead Matthew Stevens 3-2. Now, table two is Chris Wakelin and Robbie Williams. We saw... Uh, that very lengthy second frame, but anyway, it's 2 1. Wakelin lost that frame, of course, on the black. He won the third, and he's in front in the fourth. 27. A tweet from Luke Emery Wood, watching from sunny Birmingham, he says. And he's one of the. P.S. He says, I haven't met Ken yet. So there you go, David. <laughs> You're the only one. There's, a, there's always one, isn't there? There's always one. The, well, hope to meet you soon, Luke. There'll be many chances, Luke, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to an exhibition near you <laughs> at some stage. Well, Chris Wakelin, it'd be obviously relieved to have won that third frame. That's the beauty, though, these long matches. OK, it was a blow losing that second frame, but ooh, the blow missing that as well. Yeah, he, he's just struggling a little bit in the early stages. He'd be, I guess, favourite here, but Robbie Williams is certainly no pushover. He's well aware of that. Yeah, of course, yeah. And Wilso is looking from uh, watching and tuning in from Port Stevens. I think you mentioned that, did you, earlier? In Australia, go Robbo, he says. Well, this is an aggressive shot. Look at this. One. Not quite worked out. If he'd have landed plum on a colour there, that would have been uh, one of the shots of the day, possibly. <laughs> Just obviously hoping for a little bit of fortune yeah you always trust in a little bit of luck but he has a chance try and get this cue ball right in behind the black a little Probably bit short of pace but he's got the uh, slight advantage in the safety he's left the red into the right center but it'd be difficult and dangerous for chris wakeland to take that red on a reviewer in what he describes as costa del cleethorpes says so loving the coverage Ken appeared here at a charity exhibition and donated all his earnings to the, for the night to the cause. What a great fella. There you go. I rest my case. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Rom in uh, Sydney, Australia, 
do you think there's any chance of a ranking tournament being staged again in Australia? I think the issue there, I was talking to Neil about this actually, Neil Robertson, and they have a, there's a certain tax, isn't there, that um, it's like an entertainer's tax, that if you go there as a sports person, you have to pay a certain amount back. So that's a bit of an issue because no matter how high the prize fund is, you have to hand a lot of it back. Yeah, it'd be great to go back there, wouldn't it? I know we were in Bendigo for a couple of years. What a wonderful place it is, Australia. Bendigo, just outside Melbourne. Great city, Melbourne. Beautiful country. Neil Robertson on tomorrow. He's playing Jamie Jones. Be very interesting. Played well yesterday, I thought, against Zach Surety and seemed to have a good attitude about coming here. It wasn't sort of too down about it, just saw it as another match. And I do think that playing arena, and he mentioned it himself, helped. It, it just felt like, I mean, there's arguably more, more room around table one than there is at the Crucible. So he felt uh, like he was able to play his best stuff. Had three centuries. Well, we've been saying it for months now, but if he does qualify, then that first round draw, who plays him, is going to be very interesting. Ryan James said he's watching from sunny Swansea. Oh, good shot from Robbie Williams. And he's on the black. OK, a little bit low on it. And he's saying uh, that we think that we could see multiple Chinese players within the top five within the next five or ten years. Well, I'm not quite sure we'll see multiple Chinese players, but there's, there's a few coming through. There's definitely top 16 material, a few of them. A big shot this for Robbie Williams. Missable. Yeah, good shot, well played, and a great chance now. Look at the Reds, the way they're situated. What a chance to go two frames up again, and especially into the mid-session interval. He's a dangerous player, I think. He's definitely, from the early part of his career, made a choice to quicken up, which yeah. I think is always a good decision. Yeah. And uh, even in this frame, we saw how early he got the Reds open. He's looking to attack. He had that quite lengthy match with Anthony Hamilton, who's obviously you know, slowed down over the years, but... Robbie Williams, he likes to get on the front foot. Yeah, actually, it's a good point you make because I remember playing him in a qualifier and, and I, a couple of years ago, and I couldn't believe from the first time that I played him to, the, to that last time that how quick that he speeded up, became so much more aggressive. Uh, he made that conscious decision, and I totally agree with you, though. It's a, it's for the better, and he's he's got a lot more better results. 15. Doesn't hang about, gets on with it. Not so ponderous anymore. Sees the shot, plays it, and uh, plays it. He's been getting some good results, hasn't he, lately? Yeah, beat John Higgins in the British Open. Best run this season, last 16 of the Welsh. I've had another uh, message from Australia in Brisbane. Callum is in Brisbane hoping for Robbo, Bingham and Nopon to go through. And uh, Nick says he's in London now but grew up watching it on TV in Sweden we had a legendary commentator Kim Hartman on Eurosport 21 yeah still going strong I believe Addy in Cologne in Germany just the one hour time difference makes it easier to follow hats off to all the hardcore fans in Australia or the US who don't have this luxury it's raining cats and dogs he says in West Germany <laughs> <laughs> well we're in indoor sport thankfully All square, 27 points apiece. Look at Chris Wakelin looking around behind his back. 27. Having a little peek, but safely in. Now, this black and another four reds and high value colour should be enough before he even contemplates that red down into the bulk area. Can't stress how important these type of frames are. It's great seeing the sentries, but when you he's, that's why he said a quick look at the scoreboard. It's just so important to win these type of frames. When your opponent has been in, has had a chance, missed, you've got in, you played some good safety. You miss your opportunity, but took your medicine, forced a mistake, and particularly going into the mid-session interval.
Oh, that was a nice little kiss. That could have gone wrong. He got into the cue ball. Didn't get any side on it. But that was a lovely little kiss just to knock this into play and straight forward into the left centre pocket. Back for the black again. There's no doubt he's seen Wakelin just struggle a bit and he's decided, OK, this is my chance in this period of the match to take control and show him I'm feeling confident. Yeah, and of the, of the two players, and that's one of the reasons why I posed the question earlier, like, of the two players, even though Chris Wagner's had more success of the recent years and banging on the door to 16, that he looks a lot more nervous than Robbie Williams. So far, I know it's early stages, long way to go, but at the moment, he looks a little bit more nervous. 51. Oh, a bit short with the cue ball, so he's going to have to go for that red now in bulk. Shouldn't be a problem. Stun the cue ball, or he can play it off a cushion. And 30 points in the lead. He'll have a quick look at the score. If he, he'd like to get on the pink here. If he could get on the pink, that would put him 37 ahead with 35 remaining. So he's just got to be careful. He's come a little bit straight in this red. Will he play for the pink into the right centre? Or the left centre? Well, he's screwed out off the cushion. But he's OK. And he's on the pink. Into yeah. the green pocket. And Wakely's on the brink of going 3-1 down. He's got to play the pink, surely. Just drop the pink in. Make sure the pink. Off one cushion. Cue ball. Natural angle going towards the red. Make sure the pink, though. Yeah, well played. He did make sure. But look how hard he hit it. Needs a kiss. And he's got it again. Well, Ooh. Sorry, Ken. It should be his frame. I wonder if we can just jump to table one. Because Matthew Stevens is on a massive break there. He's already had a century in frame one and he's got a chance to make another one so it should be Williams's frame here but here it is Matthew Stevens as we pick it up of course 3-2 down but this is actually a terrific match isn't it I mean the couple of close frames as well bringing the drama some big breaks in amongst it all what we were kind of hoping for from these two if you're just joining us uh, Stevens had a 1-3-5 first frame, Lazowski a 1-3-7, then the two black ball frames, Lazowski's had 76 as Matthew misses the red, so the break ends at 97, but even so, high quality, 3-3, and game very much on again. Uh, maybe table three next, show you Long and Jack Jones, we want to try and enjoy as much action as we can from all the tables, here we go, 2-2, show you Long in front. Yeah, a little tweet in from Craig Bretterton, I hope I pronounced that. How do they decide who goes on what table? And does Ken remember it? Ponton's cubicles? Well, how could I forget the Ponton's cubicles? Yeah. Uh, very claustrophobic up there in Prestatton. But yeah, well, how do they decide? Normally, it's decided, of course, by the highest seed or whatever attraction of the, each particular match may be. But generally, it should go sort of by highest seed. And if they have a match that looks a little bit more attractive on paper, that the viewers might find more interesting, well, then sometimes it's down to the discretion of the tournament director. Well, we've had a few instances 
this year, you know, where we've had like a past world champion like Stuart Bingham, not on the match table, sort of went to a, a player that was higher ranked than him. And as I said, that's just down to discretion of the of the tournament director. You'll never please everyone. No. <laughs> but, you know, there's commercial decisions in amongst it as well. But, of course, the beauty of Judgment Day, we can jump into each table. Show you long here, just looking to press on into a 3-2 lead. Jack Jones, I think, proved last year, you know, he can win the tactical frames as well. So, Joe trying to break free of that and get on a bit of a scoring run. We saw him, of course, he lost a rather heartbreaking semi-final in Edinburgh, the Scottish Open this season, to Gary Wilson, who got three snookers on the colours in the decider to deny him a place in the final. viewer in Japan he says really happy this is on YouTube we don't get to watch much snooker here which qualifier could go further this year I wonder maybe Robertson or Lazowski it'd be great to see Bingham have a good run well hello to uh, to you I'm glad you're enjoying it and uh, David Caulfield he writes a terrific website actually snooker HQ he says I'm curious to know if I'm the only one tuning in from Seoul in South Korea it's wow. a very small snooker scene here 57. mostly Chinese expats three cushion billiards is much more popular mm. well, there you go Okay, let's go table six. What's happening over there? Yeah, it looks like 3-2 to Zhou Yilong. So let's go to Louis Heathcote and Stuart Bingham. This is a very interesting match, I think. Bingham's had a century to lead 3-2, and he's in front in the next. Mm, he's got a, the black off the spot. He's got to just judge this little cannon on the red and the pink. He could play this with a bit of pace. Cue ball will go into the pink, probably brush off the red, and then maybe dislodge one or two of those reds just above it it doesn't have to yeah he's just saying seeing what sort of connection he needs off that pink what's he gonna play here he could play this with a bit of pace and just hope that he can disturb something now how's your look oh that red just coming back over off the cushion. Is he on this red up into the yellow pocket? He's having a good look. Must be pretty tight. Are these two reds a plant on into the left corner? Could have been nicer. But he maybe just have enough of this red. Yeah, I think he does. Bit of a stretch. he left has he left anything maybe not maybe those two reds are in a line are they a plant into the middle could be he's one of those players he'd go if, if, if there's something on he'll take it on so he's trying to see if he can make this plant he's going to play it seems to have lined it up but he's leaving the world on if he misses it Red below the black would be possible, even if he screws the white back here. But in it goes, so he's in. Yeah, nice shot that, because he knew he was going to be leaving a red there had he missed it. So brave shot to take on, but risk versus reward, and the reward is there if he can, well, make a counter punch here against his opponent. Just to to run down the scores. 3-3 three, three, as we know Lazowski and Stevens. 3-1 we saw Robbie Williams over Chris Wakelin. Show you long won that frame. We were just watching 3-2 over Jack Jones. 2-2 two, two, Lou Heishan and Jensen Kendrick. 3-1 Yuan Sijun over Steve Maguire. Maguire's well in front in the next. It's 3-1 as we saw Mark Davis over Ricky Walden. Her Gyo Chang has just taken a 3-2 lead over Dominic Dale. No, that was a nice shot. Didn't have to play into those reds, but of course opening them up now. Has really given him a great chance here. I always knew he was going to be on this red in the middle. Cool. 
Oh, oh, what a miss. What a miss from Louis Heathcote. Now, slightly hampered this red just under his body, it's just uh, hampering him here. Just a bit mindful of it. So the referee as well be standing in position. It's a very open table. But it's a good pot from Bingham. Yeah. Big chance for 4-2. Louis Heathcote had his chance, but uh, broke down pretty quickly. the pressure of playing in the World Championship qualifiers. Cue ball getting clean. Maybe there was a heavy contact, but it wasn't smooth cueing from the former World Championship. Being be so disappointed. What a chance to go into a 4-2 lead now. Chance falls back to Louis Heathcote. so many different types of frames sometimes someone gets in with a long red makes a century other times there's been chances on either side and, and they're the ones that feel sort of psychologically more significant Louis Heathcote thought he'd thrown it away but within a minute or two he's back at the table with another good chance to level up remember he's never played at the crucible it's a big big day for him would, would be the biggest day of his career wouldn't it if he were to get through no. beat his good friend Ollie Lyons and also Elliot Slesser who came back at him but Heathcote Handled that to get over the line 10 8. <laughs> Definitely the, the good crowd in that makes a big difference to the players. You oh, know, it's a good atmosphere. Without, without a doubt, without a doubt. And you know, when they walk into the arena and there's a lot of a nice welcome, nice round of applause, just creates to the atmosphere. And even the applause going off in the other tables, but they notice people watching them. You know, and it's a multi table setup here, the first four tables in front of the grandstand and even at the the back four tables there's a nice grandstand there for people to watch. It just makes it makes it more special. You really feel that you're you're playing in something that's <coughs> so so meaningful, you know, and something that all these players and particularly the ones who haven't been there would have dreamed of. So puts more emphasis on it and as I said <coughs> the setup has been well top quality here at the English Institute of Sport. Done a great job. So, just needs to land nicely on this last red. Needs a bounce. He didn't hit that as he would have liked. OK. 27. He's got a little angle. He could just stun the cue ball out between green and brown, but that wasn't hit as pure as he would have liked. Missable, this. Oh, just struggled in, but he's in. And he's on the blue, but not ideal position. He's got to play this off the ball cushion, try and land behind the yellow. Will he play it for the middle or will he play it for the yellow pocket itself? He's struggling. <laughs> the ball struggled into the middle pocket. He's played it for the green pocket, but once again, the angle is not perfect. He's got a bit of work to do. I think he should have really played it back for the yellow pocket. And now he... Uh, got to play it off two cushions. Very missable. Very missable. Yeah, he just went about that. On the last couple of shots, just went about it the wrong way. Just gradually position went awry. Well, it's turned into quite a big frame now, hasn't it? Both had a couple of chances. Bingham looking for some sort of cover. No, it's OK. Yeah. But, well, he 
could be in a bit of trouble here, Bingham. It's just a little roll up. Knock the yellow past the blue and get that cue ball tight behind the blue. Oh, has it rolled off? Didn't hit it. Great. A lot of side, a lot of drag. One of those frames, if we didn't have the score graphic on, you'd think it was sort of eight each. <laughs> That's all to come tonight, maybe. Oh, hang on, hang on. Does ball run strike again? Oh! <laughs> I mean, he would have been snookered on the green, but the fact is the yellow's over the pocket. Yeah, and I don't think he's snookered. I think, I think he can pot this yellow. I, if not directly, certainly off the cushion, but it wouldn't even be a difficult swerve. Maybe able to hit it direct. Is he going off the cushion? Off cushion it is. Oh, we could have hit that a lot harder. Oh, Louis. A few nervy ones from both players at the moment. That's what this World Championship qualifier is, does to you. Yeah, this is still tricky. Yeah, and it's not in. <laughs> Oh, what a frame. Well, I've seen a few black ball finishes. Are we going to see another one here? 15 points behind for Bingham. It's not a, it's not guaranteed to be on the brown here. Not guaranteed. And the cue ball has gone very, very close to this middle. Is it going to make it? <laughs> well, what a shot. How would you like to have this shot? Exactly. Can hardly see the cue ball. Look at where it is. Look at where it's finished. I mean, uh, this is this is gonna take some queuing here. To pot this brown. Get on the blue. Put that down. Put the phone down. Oh, Olivia Martil just asking a member of the audience to put their phone down. I mean, that's the last thing you want, isn't it? Stuart Bingham's point of view. Member of the audience playing on the phone or maybe filming it right in his eye line. What a shot! He's got face with here. In fact, he had a, such a difficult shot, it didn't even attempt the pot, and I don't blame him. That's experience there, right there for you there, Dave. Yeah. He knows winning this frame would be actually quite big now because of the, all the chances on either side. So he doesn't just want to hand a, an easy starter to Louis Heathcote just to keep him under pressure. Just to confirm, by the way, Mc Steve Maguire won the fifth frame, so he's 3-2 down to Yuan Sijun. Jensen Kendrick is about to go 3-2 upon Lou Hyson, so his remarkable story continues. Mm -hmm. From 2-0 down, wasn't he, as well, I think. Nobby has sent us uh, a little tweet in. It's a beautiful day in Alicante. Wow. But okay. he's inside watching the snooker. He's not out in the sun, getting the sun tan. If it was me, of course, I'd be brushing up on the freckles, Dave, you know, hoping that they join up at some stage. Yeah, without giving too much away, the room we're in has no windows, <laughs> so I have no idea what the weather's doing outside. <laughs> oh, the brown needs to travel, needs to travel. Oof. Well, is it potable? Has it travelled enough? Or is this brown cuttable into the left centre? It's pretty close. It may have just travelled far enough past the middle. And the reason I say that is normally you'd see the player come around and have a look at the angle, but he hasn't done that, so it's not potable. He's played this well. Played this very, very well. Good shot. Mark Davis uh, is eight. Uh, sorry, he's four-one up on uh, Ricky Walden's an eighty-one break there, Mark Davis. So he's uh, on top early on. Let's stay on this though, because this has been a very dramatic frame.
anxious look from Lewis Seacold as he left the brown. It's always a danger when you're playing that shot. Trying to get the cue ball down behind the black, but the most important part of the equation should be to get the object ball safe, and he hasn't done that. The brown, I think, is potable. Is he going to take it on, though? He's got a straightforward safety shot. Didn't take it on. The blue, maybe a blocking ball here. No. We have uh, James watching in Singapore, hoping for a Jack Lazowski win tonight. Matt Selt tomorrow. Enjoying the coverage. Thank you, James. Now then, this is close. Not quite. Yeah, of course, increasingly people come from around the world, don't they? Spectators come to the Crucible. It's got such a iconic image and you know the word iconic is overused but it really does apply to that building well this is a chance to pop this and a much simpler chance for Louis Heathcote but it's been such a nervy frame I don't think anything's guaranteed right now Heathcote 12 in front, so he needs brown and blue to finally put away this sixth frame. Just building himself up for this brown. Yeah, he potted that with great authority, actually. Yeah, good solid pot, wasn't it? You could hear the brown hit the letter of the pocket. And that will give him a nice boost because he could have lost his frame, well, two or three times. So a good frame to win for him. I wonder if we can get to table eight and catch up with Dominic Dale and her Go Chang next. Because that's quite a sensitive stage as well. The pink goes in. Yeah, Dominic Dale trying to get back to the crucible for the first time in ten years. Three two down currently, but with a good chance to win the frame. Here he is. He's leading by forty five. So in fact that red to make absolutely sure, just checking the scores. He's got that unique walk round the table, Dominic, hasn't <laughs> he? He's a unique character, isn't he? But what a character and what a great player he still is. Yeah, of course. He is eccentric. V very likable. The spaceman, his nickname. But, uh, yeah, great character, very funny guy, great commentator, but a wonderful player and has been over the years. Very clever. And a great collector of not only snooker and memorabilia, but just 65. antiques and all sorts of stuff. Anything from dresses from actresses to uh, clocks from train stations. It takes you all sorts. It does, yeah, you name it, Dominic's got it. To watches, a great lover of watches as well. Particularly the old style. Oh, yeah, what a, what a great character he has been over the years, Dominic Dale. Well, he's won this frame. I guess after this we go back to table one because that's a big match with Jack Lazowski and Matthew Stevens. And uh, Lazowski's made an 80 break actually in frame seven to lead 4 3. So they're really rattling through the frames. As Dominic uh, completes this one, three each here. 85. Yeah, clearance of 92 from Dominic Dale. So table one, I think, calls. See if Jack Lazowski can just open a, an advantage over Matthew Stevens. If he wins frame eight, 17. then obviously the last frame's big because he has a chance for six three. So this frame, I think, is an important one to to drop in on actually. Yeah, there's been two black ball frames, but some big breaks as well. Zowski's had 137, 76 and 80, and Stevens 135 and 97.
18. Uh, Gary on Q says, Ken, we met in the bar of the Novotel opposite the barbican. Well, <laughs> enjoy, enjoying a glass of red wine. I won't share what time of the morning it was, or maybe the evening. No. <laughs> but there you go. I hope you're enjoying the coverage, Gary. Good queuing from the side pushing. It looks like it because the walk is purposeful. You can tell a lot about a snooker player's walk. If he wasn't on this, it would have been a slow trudge. But he's okay. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see when he pots the pink. Will it go back in its own spot? <coughs> Matthew Stevens just like trying to hold the cough back there. That's what Paul Collier just checking to see will the pink go in the spot. If it doesn't, of course it goes directly behind the reds, close to its own spot, in line with the black and the top cushion, which means that that red at the bottom of the pack is not available. Matthew, <laughs> a little grin to himself. He can't stop, can't stop uh, coughing at the moment. Have a little glass of water there, Matthew. Four, the only good thing about that pink going where it is now, it's available. It is potable into the right corner, so Jack can play on the pink here. Leave a nice angle. Pot the pink and split the reds open. And win the frame from this visit. There you see the crowds in the background there. Nice atmosphere. Doesn't have to do much with the cue ball. Just leave the cue ball somewhere where the red is. It's got to have a nice 41. angle, and it has done. Now, this has to be played with a lot of pace, a lot of power, a lot of top. May see the cue ball even bounce a little bit here. He could try to play that shot. Bounce the cue ball. Yeah, there you see the bounce trying to bring the reds into play, but hasn't worked out. Yeah, it was looking promising, but Snooker's uh, really that straightforward. Of course, he had to all those centuries in the previous round, but obviously this is a step up really playing Matthew Stevens. A little message from John in sunny Belfast. He said if you could say hi to Helen, his sister. Well, Helen, I hope you're enjoying the coverage along with John and everybody else from around the world. Let us know where you're watching from. You're enjoying the coverage, who your picks are. Matthew Stevens just needs a little bit of time. He's going to go outside his throat, his coffin. Yeah. So he's going to take a little bit of a respite. Yeah, maybe just a drink of water. And He didn't want to sit there coughing and spluttering and putting <laughs> his opponent off, does he? I mean, he, that's, he just didn't want to do that. So players are allowed just a short break. I think we have a little, uh, a little montage to show you of the action so far on this first of the two judgment days at the Kazoo World Championship. Two massive days in the season. Everyone trying to get to the crucible.
So table two is uh, Chris Wakelin, Robbie Williams, 3-1 to Robbie Williams. A couple of tight frames there, the second in particular, which he won on the black. Wakelin's just struggled a little bit from what we've seen, but may have a chance here just to get going. In fact, that was Chris Wakelin, sorry. <laughs> so it's Robbie Williams who gets the chance. Yeah, hopefully Matthew's okay. Just needed a, a few minutes to just sort himself out. Got some, something maybe stuck in his throat. <coughs> Robbie Williams three times to qualify, but not since 2016. So he'd love to get back there. Not least, of course, these qualifiers, they're held in Sheffield. So, you know, a lot of the guys are staying in the city centre where the Crucible is. It really is within touching distance. But obviously, for most in these, this qualifying event, it will be a case of going home and watching it on the TV. Apologies if there is any issues with the sound. Um, I'm sure that people are looking into that. <coughs> well, here's a good one, Dave. You'll like this because uh, you do a lot of commentary with him. Um, my friend, Mrs. Cobb, is a massive Alan McManus fan. He smells like. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I don't know what aftershave he wears, uh, but Dave might know a little bit more because he's been commentating with him down in uh, Chiswick. Yeah. Since the qualifiers began. I mean, I get on well with Alan, but we're not that close. <laughs> <laughs> so, a chance for Robbie Williams. But uh, pleased to say Matthew Stevens has made his way back. And, well, he certainly has, because he's not that in. <laughs> so, he's uh, certainly sorted himself out after that a little unscheduled delay. Well, it was well worth waiting for, wasn't it? Coffin sorted out. Now, what's he going to do? Is he going to play into the pack or just play for the loose reds? He's going to play for the loose reds. I don't think he played for this red on the right-hand side cushion. He's trying to check the cue ball up off the top Six. cushion for one of these loose reds just left of the pack. Now, what's he on? Well... I'm going to make way for Rob Walker, and I'll be back later as uh, the action continues. Foul. Ooh. Matthew Stevens, six. Jack Lizowski, four. Mm. Couldn't have foreseen that. In off into the middle pocket. Let's enjoy your break, David. We'll see you back in a little bit. Rob Walker joins us. Again, Ken, I've just been next door listening to you guys. What a uh, what an absolute drilled shot that was from yeah. Lazowski. This match, I mean, I know we were excited about it before it started, but it's absolutely lived up to the billing. Oh, hasn't without it? it's a been doubt, phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, couple of big breaks. Started up with a couple of centuries. Then, of course, oh, two black ball games. Well, this frame has gone a little bit one. scrappy, but yeah, it's great. I think, the, you know, just to be able to nip in between, you know, the different tables and see what's going on, it's just fantastic, you know. I've been particularly impressed with Matthew. You know, it's a while since he reached those two finals, 2000, 2005, bidding for his 19th Crucible appearance. Missed out last year on Judgment Day to Dave Gilbert, 10-7. But mm. I think <coughs> Matthew's given a great account of himself today. Last 32 of the British and the World Open. So it hasn't been a phenomenal season from his point of view, but he's produced some, some lovely snooker so far today. 
Yeah, he has, yeah. And he will be, and has proven to be so far, a difficult opponent for Jack Lizowski. One of the few players, as you mentioned, at the top of the coverage that has made it to the one-table setup. Of course, he's been in a couple of finals at the Crucible, a couple of semi-finals. Doesn't like that one, though. The blue is slightly hampering his position with the rest, so looking at maybe taking the red off the cushion. No, he's gone back and maybe playing a different shot now. Lazowski only missed out on the top 16 by, I think, 6,500 wow. to his great friend Rob Milkin. So he was, yeah, I suppose it's <laughs> you can say it's unlucky you finish in 17th, but the rankings are what they are. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he'll he'll probably say. I mean, he's normally philosophical. He's quite honest with his own form this season. He's been a little bit down with his results. There's no doubt about that. But if he can turn it on, you know, he could put it up to anybody. There's no doubt about that. Wonderful talent, Jack Lazowski. You've got to be careful here. This red can pot. But you've got to be careful of the other red. doesn't run the cue ball into it. Play the safety shot instead. I remember a couple of years ago, Ken, when uh, when we were at the World Grand Prix. I think it was when we were in Coventry for ITV, and Mark Williams was beaten by Jack, and he came in and said afterwards, "If I coached him, he wasn't saying this in a boastful way. He said, if I coached that boy, he could win everything. <laughs> but but he said." You know, I'm not after a coaching job. I just, uh, he was just talking. He said he can just do things with a cue ball and on a snooker table that most, most other players could only dream of. He he, he has got unbe an unbelievable touch around the table, Lizowski. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, Stephen Hendry paid him a wonderful compliment as well. Like he, he sort of like, a, he hits the ball almost like a, he's a mirror image of uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan, you know, like a left handed Ronnie O'Sullivan. The way he strikes the ball and the way he sets up. And his cue action all in one. There's another wonderful pot. Yeah, it's just this, some of the, the simple pots. I mean, he, he put a wonderful long ball and then he could miss anything. He, he's got to be just a little bit more mindful and a little bit concentration has to be a little bit better. But yeah, and as I said earlier, no one would love to see Seven. him win his first and big event more than myself big fan of Jack Lazowski just coming in pocket I've, I've stopped asking him about how important it would be to win that first ranking title he, he just gets absolutely sick of that question Ooh. Jack Lazowski 7 it's another momentary lapse in concentration. But the, the six titles he's lost, I think he's lost multiple times to Judd in big finals. So too Selby and Neil Robertson. So the half dozen occasions he's had to secure a maiden ranking title, he's come up against the very, very, very best. It, you know, he, ha he hasn't had an even money final yet has he because it's you know it's been three of the three of the greats he's come up against yeah sometimes you can just run into those players who are playing the top of the game in finals you know and just come unstuck then you see other players that might be playing guys in finals and they might be ranked, you know, 20 or 30 plays below them. Just sometimes the look at a draw. But you've got to keep putting yourself in those positions. I think that's the good thing about Jack Lazowski. That this year has been a little bit awkward for him, a little bit difficult. Matthew Stevens forced into taking that difficult red on and he's left it, gifted a chance. So winning this frame is important for Lizowski because he knows he's guaranteed a lead going into this evening's session. 
And that will be enough in this frame. 54 in the lead. Easy yellow and an easy red to follow. Matthew Stevens just gone off the ball slightly. Where are we going next, Rob? Well, let's, well, let's have a look, shall we? Stephen Maguire's managed to draw level with Juan Cijun, three apiece. That's that's an important couple of frames on the spin for him. Zhou Yu Long hoping to move 4-2 up. He's at the table on a break of 24. Why don't we have a look at table three? Zhou Yu Long against Jack Jones. Yu Long leads 3-2 and he is on the table. Lazowski with a, uh, a two-frame cushion. So, Joe Yu Long, quarter finalist of the English and the UK. Remember, he beat John Higgins and lost to Ronnie in the decider mm. from 4 1 down. But uh, he's, um, you know, he's finding it tough going here against Jack Jones. And mm. what a run to the quarters from Jack last year. Yeah. He absolutely thrived on the Crucible stage, didn't he? Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And I tell you, what I've been loving today. And, and as in previous years, is that uh, we've getting a lot of tweets coming in. I don't know whether you've checked your Twitter account, but we're getting a lot of tweets from people all over the world. And here's a wonderful one from Keith James. He's 83. First player, he says he met with Joe Davis in an exhibition. He's met Cliff Wilson, Terry Griffiths, Doug Mountjoy, Alex Higgins, ref the money match he played, John Spencer, Ray Reardon, fist bump with Ronnie, blanked by Stephen Hendry, and uh, wish he'd met Jimmy White. And... Uh, myself so Keith if you're watching at 83 years of age still loving the game and that's a wonderful uh, a wonderful tweet to meet all those people as well fantastic and I hope you're enjoying the coverage yeah there's tweets coming in from all over the world Rob from as far as Australia to Illinois and Charlotte in America South Africa Seoul and Korea Japan Ennis Crown in Ireland and County Cavan and Belfast Edinburgh I know you mentioned the, uh, the 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 message that came in from Finland. Have you, as I moved, I, I got a quick cup of tea, so forgive me if you've already re uh, read this one out. Have you read out the one about the, the guy watching with his 10-year-old daughter in Shanghai? No. Right? Watching with his 10-year-old daughter in Shanghai, big fan of the Belgian bullet. He grew up cheering on Cliff Wilson. He says, did you ever play him, Ken? I did. I played him, and I was saying that to Dave earlier. I played him to qualify it was my first time I ever qualified for the world championships back in 1991 I thought it was 92 where I played Steve Davis in the very first round so uh, Cliff Wilson what a character there's another one here Ojas forgive me if the pronunciation's not quite bang on every year in April I love judgment day Thanks for the entertainment and the tension. I'm originally a Brummy, but these days I watch from Latvia, where we've got a few decent youngsters <laughs> who might make it onto the big stage one day. You never know. Yeah, um, there's loads of messages. Yeah, yeah. Here's one from Steve Kirk, all the way from North Perth, uh, the Pop Black Snooker Club. So I uh, hope you're enjoying watching it. Now, come get Jones, get on this red. Was 2 0 up, of course. 3 2 down now. So important to sort of stop the raw here for Jack Jones. Get another frame on the board and get back to parity. Rachel and Dagenham. <laughs> Where I used to live, down in Dagenham in Essex. So, Rachel, I hope you're uh, enjoying it. First day. For your son back to school. You've got a bit of time off until you pick him up later, I'm sure. A lot of people skiving. Watching <laughs> it, watching it off, you know, not not working. Or maybe watching it on the laptop while they're working, I don't know. Maybe they've got two screens. They've got the snooker <laughs> on, they've got you on low level in one one half of the table, and then they've got their laptops out on the other. Just just keeping half an ear out for for something significant. Just a quick uh, update. Mark Davis, by the way, 4-2 up on Ricky Walden, and he leads by 23 in the early stages of the seventh. What a what a story it would be if um, if the battler from Hastings made it back to the Crucible 30 years after his debut in oh. 1994. 
Oh, it would be incredible. But as you say that, Rob, look at that miss. Wow. What a miss from Jack Jones. Still a bit of work to do. Yeah, keep your messages coming through. This would hurt Jack Jones. Great opportunity to draw all square at three apiece. Robbie Williams, 3-2 up, by the way, while he contemplates this. Williams, 3-2 up on Wakelin on two. Kendricks in the balls on a break of 14. Three frames each between himself and Liu Heo Chan. What a story that would be if Kendrick manages to get to the Crucible. I saw him in the car park earlier today, and he said he's more concerned about keeping his tour card. And obviously, if you come through qualifying to make it to the Crucible, you are automatically given a two-year extension, irrespective of where you are in the rankings. So tour survival on the line for Kendrick today. Davis, I mentioned 4-2 up on Ricky. Guo Chang against Dominic Dale. Guo Chang now leading 4-3. Heathcote 4-3 up on Stuart Bingham, but Bingham's at the table on a break of 14 on table six. And Stephen McGuire leads by, well, just a handful of points against Huan Si Jun at the beginning of the seventh. He's had a tough day trying to hang on to the coattails of his Chinese opponent. Would-be debutant, one of six. Six potential debutants across Judgment Day Part 1 and Part 2. Now, I think we'll stay with this just for a little while, but uh, Bingham now on a break of 20. Table looks good for the ball run. What a turnaround from that 7-3 deficit against Carrington. Desperately needed to find some inspiration, and he did. Well, that was absolutely drilled by Zhou Yulong. Excellent long pop. Ivan, I've just been chatting to Ivan Hershevitz over a cup of tea whilst whilst Ken and Hendo were holding court, and we could potentially have a record number of Chinese qualifiers uh, or players at the Crucible. Ding, of course, already there as of right. Zhang Ander up into the top 16 after winning that international championship. And we've got a couple of uh, all Chinese clashes tomorrow. Cao Yu Peng against Pang Jung Siu. And Si Jiawei, the surprise semi finalist last year, up against Wu Yiza. And we could have a huge number of Chinese players qualifying. Jack Jones did well to hit that tight in behind the blue that was almost nestled on the green pocket, a uh, green, green spot. Joe Yulong made the semis of the Scottish earlier this season. Lost to Gary Wilson, 6-5. Wilson, remember, came, well, even by his own admission, came out of nowhere to successfully defend the Scottish Open title. Arrived back in Edinburgh with not much form and just seemed to get stronger and stronger as the rounds went on. Ooh. And Joe Yulong would have expected to finish this frame off at that visit, but the brown has wobbled in the jaws of the green pocket and come back out. Yeah, didn't they really need to have to hit it so hard? Chance for Lazowski or Jack Jones, I should say, to get that brown. Yeah, pretty good. Tight on this top cushion. It's going to need brown, blue, pink, and black Jack Jones, but didn't think he was going to get another chance there. So he's played a decent shot. going to play here side to side maybe 
Yeah, Brown on side cushion, cue ball on the other side cushion, and he's played it well. I think we'll stay with this, but by the way, just a quick update on table seven. Davis is now on a half-century break of 51, and he will move into a 5-2 lead over Ricky Walton. Guaranteed an advantage for the second session. And we'll be here all afternoon when they resume, or all evening, as it were, depending on how quickly these matches finish. We'll get an interview with every winner willing to talk to us. And we'll do the same again tomorrow. The draw, incidentally, live on Five Live, around about quarter to nine, maybe 8.40, on Five Live, on the breakfast show. It will also, I'm reliably informed, be streamed on the red button and on the BBC website at the same time. And Mark Allen has agreed to fly over to Manchester to be on hand to give his reaction when some of the hand grenades come out of the draw. I mean, talk about some, depending upon what happens for the rest of today and tomorrow, Ken, we could have some absolutely ludicrous matchups. If Neil Robertson uh, comes through his match against Jamie Jones tomorrow, imagine Neil Robertson coming out of the hat for Luca Bracel, 10 o'clock Saturday morning, defending champion. If Bingham makes it through, 4-3, by the way, but Heathcote's in the balls on a break of 28, so they're all square on points, but it's Heathcote at the table hoping to take a 5-3 advantage into tonight but if Bingham turns that round you could have another world champion coming out the draw for a first round encounter I, yeah, yeah absolutely it feels yeah. very exciting this year yeah absolutely without a shadow of a doubt there's some really tough names in the draw and uh, I mean you put the mix in there with Jack Lazowski the winner of that and Matthew Stevens whoever comes through that is going to be a real one one to avoid I think it's always the same every year there, there are certain players there the top 16 will be looking at and saying, oh, I don't want him, I don't want him, don't want him. You know, they probably prefer, as I was saying earlier, someone with less experience, you know, maybe a, a debutant that is on record normally. Uh, debutants have struggled at the Crucible, but, you know, even some of the ones this year, there's so many tournaments now, that even the debutants have got... You know, a lot more about them, a bit more confidence about them and not afraid of the big stage. So, yeah. But there are some ba banana skins in there for the top 16 for the draw on Thursday morning, which I know you're going to be doing, of course, up BBC Radio 5 Live. Yes, really looking forward to that. And, and yeah, there's other, there's other good talking points. Tom Ford, great to see him amongst the world's top 16. Automatically qualified to the Crucible for the first time. And I've... I was over um, helping out Mark Allen with his charity exhibition in Belfast. So Tom, Tom flew over for the event as well. And I said to him, does it feel strange that you already unequivocally know, this was a couple of weeks ago on Mother's Day, uh, does it feel strange that you already know for certain you're in the draw? And he said, no, it doesn't now. But when the qualifiers happen, I really will feel strange because there'll be every bit of my body thinking I should be there. What a snooker this is, by the way. Yeah, well, I think he's deserved his, you know, right to be in that 16. He's had a wonderful last couple of seasons, Tom Ford, and uh, yeah, playing some great snooker. I mean, should have knocked Mark Williams out of that tournament in the Tour Championship with Manchester last week. One red missed on 50 till, and Williams made that, well, well one of the best clearance that we've ever seen and went on to win the tournament and beat Ronnie in the final. So Tom Ford, yeah, he'll enjoy his time as, oh, this is a good hit, very good hit. Very, very good hit. Sticking with this just for now, Jack Jones, desperate to draw level. Joe you Long still with that lead of 13. Heathcote, by the way, his break is now 71 on table six, so he is now guaranteed a lead this evening. He'll 
possibly go for a quick break at the end of this one. 5-3 up. Wan Siyun and Stephen Maguire still three apiece. Dominic Dale trails 4-3 against the youngster Guo Shang, who I think is almost certain to be nominated as Rookie of the Year. I think yeah. overall it's been a good campaign for the, yeah, the young Chinese youngster. Absolutely, yeah. Here's a great question. Matthew Lester. Afternoon, gents. I've always wanted to ask... Uh, when you go to the Crucible as a debutant, what's the biggest thing you have to deal with? Is it the history of the place, how small it is? In my opinion, the world should stay at the Crucible forever. Well, I totally agree. I hope it always stays at the Crucible because of the history, because of the nostalgia. Yes, it is a little bit cramped. It is a little bit small, even the facilities for backstage and TV and press and WST staff, referees, etc., players. But, and you will... Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, but there's no place like it for the atmosphere, the electricity from the morning session to the evening session. It's just... Uh, and I think that's all down to the, to the history of the place and, the, and all those glorious matches that we would have witnessed as kids, as, you know, adolescents and, and now as adults growing up over the years. I couldn't agree more, Ken. I, I, I'm staying in an apartment this year instead of a hotel for the first time and I'm up, I'm up on the 12th floor with a, with a wonderful sort of almost aerial, as it were, view of the City of Steel. And it just feels so nice coming back here. I've got so many professional and personal memories connected with the Crucible. I, I like you, I, I would be, well, nothing stays the same forever, but I, I hope that the World Championship always stays at the Crucible. It, it, everywhere you walk around the venue it's yeah. impractical you have to stop in the corridors because if somebody comes down towards vip with a big tray of drinks you're in the way <laughs> but but the the physical layout of of the venue is one of the reasons why it's able to generate such an incredible intimate truly historic atmosphere it could be bigger it could have more lights it could be more glitzy but it's just every every step you take inside that venue, on stage or backstage, yeah. it, you, you are surrounded by snooker memories. Absolutely, and snooker history, and that's why one of the reasons, and even though it is quite small, it, it holds less than 1,000 people, I think 950, but, uh, yeah, it should never go. So thank you for that nice uh, tweet, Matthew, and I hope that answers your question. Keep them coming in, at Rob Walker, at Dave Hennon, at Ken Doherty, 1997, uh, and of course at WST TV. We're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, uh, we're on Discovery, and we're on Matrium. So keep your tweets coming in, keep watching, keep enjoying Judgment Day, and uh, we'll keep providing the commentary and, of course, the pictures to you, and the excitement and the drama as it all unfolds. We're going to take a short break, Rob. I'm going to go for a little cup of tea, and uh, I'll leave you in, uh, in the voice of yourself and of course the great David Hennon as well so I'll be back shortly thanks very much to Ken Doherty the darling of Dublin getting himself uh, refreshed and ready to go for the rest of the afternoon as as the big man Dave Henderson a uh, Dave Henderson Dave Hendon <laughs> steps back in having had a, a sandwich refreshed and raring to go whilst uh, whilst Dave's getting himself whilst Dave's getting himself ready. Uh, a quick message. Uh, Callum, because uh, Ken and I were, were, were waxing lyrical about how can you work and uh, listen at the same time. Uh, Callum has sent in a screen grab. Uh, two big screens. Um, one, one, he's doing some kind of editing, and the other, he's watching the snooker. And Gaz T, who looks like he could be a Spurs fan, judging by the icon next to his name on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it these days, um, you mentioned Ivan Hershevitz, the chief dog in the press room. I used to play snooker with Ivan at Phil's snooker centre. Um, I won't say what he has said happened towards the end of those nights. Uh, probably required a pint or two of full fat milk. Um, say hello to the big Hirsch for me before he became famous in the world of snooker. Tell him it's Gary. So thanks, Gary. Uh, keep watching. Uh, I'm just going to swap seats temporarily. Uh, so Dave Hendon will... Um, We'll pick up on the microphone. Uh, I'm now in Ken's seat, but obviously not as talented. Uh, never lifted the title in 97. Jack Lazowski, eight.
Right, we're back. We're back, Rob. Yeah, and good to be with you. And uh, we're back with table one. Five, three. Big frame this for Matthew Stevens. Obviously trying to stay in touch. Pots that one. So a big moment in this match. Five, four. We're kind of starting again. Obviously six, three. He's got a lot of work to do. To be a terrific match, this. It's been uh, heavy scoring, some close frames as well. going to set up if Matthew Stevens can win this frame here. A big setting tonight. Nine. He's played really well in this session so far, hasn't he, Dave? You know, bearing in mind a couple of last 32s, the British and the World Open, he's gone out the second round of European Masters, Northern Ireland, International Championships, Scottish, German, Welsh. But we've seen, we've seen some vintage moments from Matthew in this session. 16. This is the big shot because this is going to get him two snookers required. Yeah, he's, uh, he's got to play one more good shot here. Oh, but he's left it over the pocket. Wow, what a big moment. Matthew so 16. Jack Lazowski gets his chance to take a 6-3 advantage. Just, he wasn't trying to do anything really other than pot the red, but he didn't pot. So here we go. This could be a big dish coming up for the jackpot. These are the frames that really make a difference. I mean, you w it's about getting to 10, but psychologically, the last frame of the session, if he could take it, you know, they'll have a few hours and Matthew Stevens to sort of lick his wounds a bit, thinking of what could have been. He's already kind of thinking that there, isn't he? But is still going to put this away. Brown to blue, I guess, coming up. It's going to be kind of the key shot. The red just began to drift away from the rail Six. as it edged towards the pocket. And Matthew Stevens, double world championship runner-up, four times a semi-finalist, 01, 02, 04, and then the gap to 2012 before he tasted the single table set up again after finishing runner-up in 05. I think he will 11. have assumed the worst when that red was left hanging over the pocket. Well, let's see, because this now, as I say, the key shot, brown to blue. Cued it very nicely, didn't he? That's a lovely shot. So... Jack poised to take a 6-3 lead into tonight. And of course, the fact they don't play frame 10 20. straight away means Matthew Stevens is going to have, well, three hours to think about the ready mist and try and regroup as long as Lazowski pots this black. 26. Been a terrific session. And it's Jack Lazowski who ends it clearly the happier of the two. A dramatic last play. Matthew Stevens missed frame ball red. Lazowski clears up 6 3. They are back at 5. whatever between sessions we go to table two this is a tight one They're a little bit further behind aren't they this is only frame six Chris Wakelin two Robbie Williams three yes and Robbie Williams had that second frame on the black led 2-0 this is pretty slow compared to the other matches Kendrick leads Heo Chan 4-3 Zhou Yulong 4-2 up on Jack Jones Ricky Walden, by the way, is on a break of 23, trailing Mark Davis 5-2 over on seven. Bingham 5-3 down on Heathcote on table six. Maguire and Juan C. Yun are, are only in the early-ish stages of frame seven. So one or two of these matches just getting a little bit bogged down. But Robbie Williams is giving a great account of himself against Chris Wakelin, who's ranked 20th in the world great run to the Northern Ireland Open final 
beat Murphy, beat Lazowski comprehensively and then lost to Judd Trump. And I think he felt, although he won the shootout last year, I think he felt that it, he needed to sort of back that up and justify it by by making a traditional format ranking event final, which, which he did in Northern Ireland. But he's finding it heavy going here against Williams. Yeah, it's a, that's a great shot, actually. So, yeah, it's some big frames coming up now. Then if he can get into these reds, because he's still going to need a couple. If he can just bring them into play. He doesn't need to bring them all out. Just get on one, and he's a heavy favourite with the frame. I think if you're struggling early on in a match like this, you're just trying to gr grind out frames. It doesn't have to be pretty necessarily. That can wait, maybe. Just try and get out of this. You know, 5-4 either way is, is fine. And then try and play a bit better tonight when you've had a break and a bit of time to just get away out of the arena. I'm not sure what sort of angle he has here to get into these reds. Yeah, not a great one. And it's not really worked out. I wonder if we can jump to table five, Steve Maguire and Yuan Sijun, because this frame's got a bit involved here. But Steve Maguire was 3-1 down there, but it's now 3-3. And this is live in the next. He's in front with a chance to leave 4-3. 23 in front. He's still going to need the awkward red by the black. So this is not quite a done deal yet. Maguire, a man who always lets you know he cares about what's happening, quite uh, emotional out there. Well, he's made the effort, he made the attempt, sorry, to get the red into play, but just didn't quite finish on the black as he would have hoped. Yes, he certainly uh, lets, his, lets his frustration show at times, Stephen. He's, he's a heart-on-sleeve kind of guy. I always love watching Stephen Maguire. 10-7 against Ash Hugill. A couple of centuries, five half centuries. I've got a question for you, Robert. Ap apologies if this, this has dealt with anyone with Ken, but we had someone tweeting in, if Jensen Kendrick qualifies, what's his nickname going to be? And that's kind of down to you, isn't it, to do the introductions? Maybe you'll speak to him. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, I, I pulled into the car park alongside him, and he's got a private number plate, the back of which says just Q, C-U-E. So I don't know whether we can get that in. But it was interesting talking to him, Dave. I said to him, you know, where's, you know, be, not being impolite, but, you know, what a, what a run and, and where's it come from? And, and, and he said, um, I don't know, really. He said he expected to feel nerves against Jordan and didn't. And for him, I'm sure, I'm sure, of course, he'd be incredibly respectful and, and, and would be delighted and honoured and all the other words you would use in association with a Crucible debut to walk down the stairs for the first time. But he just looked me in the eye and said, staying on tour would mean more than the Crucible. This is absolutely huge. As for nickname, Jensen Kendra... Uh, uh, th there, is, there isn't a rhyme that obviously or immediately sticks in my mind, so I think it would have to be done in conjunction with him. I think I'd have to ask him. Well, if anyone's got any ideas, keep them clean. Send them in. He's 4-3 up. We'll, we'll have action from that later, but we're going to stay on this frame for now. Maguire just trying to get his nose in front in this match. And a chance here to put this red away. Oh, brilliant. What a great pot. And uh, the key thing here is he doesn't need this yellow. He's checking the scores. The brown will put him 29 in front. So one snooker needed on the colours for Yuan Sijun. Now, if we can maybe just get over to table seven, it looks like Maguire's won this frame because uh, Ricky Walden and Mark Davis is uh, a bit of a meeting of veterans. Here we go. And it's 5-2 to Davis, but Walden in front in the next by 65. Ah, the frame's finished. <laughs> the frame's finished. Ricky's won it. So it's 5-3. Apologies for that. Table eight, I think, could be a good one to go to. That's Hergo, Chang and Dominic Dale. This is a real sort of uh, rookie v veteran uh, match isn't it you know you've got a first season pro 23 years of age against Dominic 52 oldest player left in the qualifying young at heart though and probably young of banter I was trying to remember off the top of my head whether I thought perhaps Mark Davis was older than Dom by six months or so but yeah you quite rightly said Dom is the oldest man in the qualifiers flourishing into his early 50s 
I was just I was just stopped outside by Rob Spencer, the tournament director, who said, uh, "Would either Mark or Dominic be the oldest ever qualifier?" Well, the answer is no. I mean, Eddie Charlton was still qualifying into his 60s. Different game then, 30 odd years ago, but uh, it would still be a great achievement, of course. But Dominic, little up against it here, against a very hungry opponent, the man in the glove. Another nickname to sort out if he gets through. Yeah, there's a definite play on words there, isn't there? Well, he misses that one, but of course the pocket covered. I think some of these matches are going to get very tight later. I mean, they're tight now, aren't they? There's not really any runaways. OK, 6-3, Lazowski, but all the others, there's just a couple of frames or one frame in them. Yeah, and 6-3 might look a little misleading if you've not seen it, because, it, you know, but but for that red that wobbled in the jaws, it, it's 5-4 and, and, and it couldn't be tighter after nine. You've got an epic stint, Rob, coming up, of course, uh, not just Judgment Day, obviously doing all the introductions at the Crucible, commentating, and then the seniors as well to follow. Yes, it's um, gone of the old days, Hendo, when I, when I first arrived. I mean, it's easy to get carried away on a, you know, on a surge, on a wave of adrenaline, going out and sampling the, uh, the nightlife and the atmosphere when you're in your late 20s. But, uh, no, I, I tend to be rather boring because, you know, you, you've... You've got to be in it all the way to the very end. And, and, you know, I think the most important thing around the Crucible, we, we all come out with stats and try and sound like we've done our research and we talk about how grateful we are. The fans have come from all over the place. The most important people are the players. Well, and that's uh, no, uh, no shabby pot there by Dom. The most important people are the players. And, and therefore, you haven't got the excuse of saying that you felt a little bit tired because you went out for beers so the following morning's 10 o'clock introduction on player x was lackluster every player deserves a hundred percent full monty when they walk out onto the uh, arena floor so that's why i tend not to go out for a couple of beers until very close towards the end of the tournament thank you chung was actually a little lucky he covered the red over the pocket and he could have gone in off and left it but dominic dale knocked in a terrific pot and obviously has this red available yeah and of course the other thing doing the introductions the, a lot of people who go there they'll only go for one session so it, it's special for them you want to make sure okay you know you feel like you want to come back next year and experience it again Dominic would love to get back after 10 years wouldn't he he's actually I mean, he's on the Eurosport rotor I got it yesterday the commentary rotor <laughs> so either way he'll be working on the championship but to get back there as a player put it this way if you're Fergal O'Brien right now keep your phone on because you might get a call I think it would be an amazing... Well, it's a good story either way, isn't it? Because Guo Chang has, has had a great, uh, you know, a really good first season coming on for the Asian Q School. But, yeah, I mean, a lot of kind of nostalgic snooker fans would think, wow, you know, Don Dale made his debut in 97 and to get back 10 years after he last appeared really would be, um, would be something quite special. In fact, he made the quarters back in 2014. I remember he came out and he stopped me at the table. He wasn't the last of the four players to emerge, so I still had other introductions. And he stopped and shook my hand and said, what do you think about my new shoes? And I said, Dominic, you're about to play a World Championship quarterfinal. Come on. And he went, oh, yeah, it's fine. Just, um, just underlines why he, he, is a, uh, he is a worthy recipient of the nickname The Spaceman. But it would be a brilliant story if he could get back there for the first time in a decade. That's gone wrong didn't get on the yellow so there's a bit of mileage in this frame maybe we'll get to table six actually because uh, they're on the last frame there Louis Heathcote Stuart Bingham it's a bit like Lazowski Stevens it could be 6-3 it could be 5-4 it's Heathcote in front of course he's trying to get there for the first time against a former champion so these are important moments in this match I think the action's been pretty quick hasn't it it's gone by pretty quickly there's not going to be anyone pulled off or anything I don't think they're going to be playing all the frames uh, several people on Twitter have, have said that Jensen Kendrick's nickname according to Wikipedia which of course cannot be doubted is the Stoke Storm so that's a pretty good one please welcome the Stoke Storm Jensen Kendrick yeah it's it's okay Wikipedia is not to be trusted uh, apparently I'm I'm married to a woman called Erin <laughs> And my wife's name is not Erin, something she reminds me of frequently. I have said to her, look, you realise how basic my understanding of the internet is. I didn't write that and have nothing to do with it. So you can't believe everything that's written on the, 
on Wikipedia. But yeah, we'll we'll bear that one in mind. The Stoke Storm. I think I might speak to him if he comes through the match and and find out what he would like as his uh, walk-on name should he get there. Well, this is an edgy frame at the moment between these two. As say Heathcote trying to get that lead. It's the fact that. You know, you stop for a couple of hours, obviously it's uh, just a, a bit of breathing space and it puts the pressure on Bingham to find his scoring boots coming back this evening. Were you commentating live on the uh, the comeback he made against Carrington at, at, at 7-3 down? No, that wasn't on uh, table one. Um, I did watch uh, quite a bit of it, but it wasn't on the main table. Just to say, Lou Heishan has actually levelled up, or he's about to, with Jensen Kendrick. So they're going to be four each. So either way, another tight one coming back this evening. Maguire did win that frame, as we thought he would. 4-3 upon Yuan Sijun. That's a really good turnaround for Maguire from 3-1 down. Trying to get through to the Crucible for a 20th time. There can't be... What would you... Ha I mean, I'm not asking you for a specific number of players, but... There can't be more than, would you say, a dozen? We've made more than 20 appearances. Well, the good news is, of course, we have the Crucible Almanac, which uh, Chris Downer uh, puts together. And, uh, yeah, it, well, I can tell you how many there have been. There have been, in terms of at least 20 appearances, 11 players. So, yeah, it's quite an elite group. Neil Robertson could get to 20 this year. Mark Selby will do. Ali Carter will do. They're all on 19. 228 players have competed at the Crucible since 1977. I think, sorry, Rob, I think possibly we could go back to table eight, actually, because it looks like it's about to come to an end, and then we'll come back to table six, if that's OK. Dominic's on the brown, looking to uh, make it 4-4 with her... Guo Chang, here we go, potted the brown. Seven. So it's in his hands here. I think he'd be disappointed now not to win this frame. These close frames, you know, they, obviously they all count the same ultimately in terms of the scoreline, but just psychologically they, they give you such a lift and indeed can be deflating for the person who loses them. Yeah, so... Just a question, has he quite got the angle here to get near the black? It might be a little straight, this. No, he's played a good shot here, as long as the cue ball just holds up. He doesn't want to run on too much. Oh, Dominic. Dominic, you've left yourself a nasty one. And the thing is, you feel if he misses it, this is going to stay near the pocket. So, big shot. This is for four each. Oh, played it very confidently. There was nothing half-hearted about that. So, Dominic Dale takes out the frame 4-4 with one left to play. Let's go back to six and see Bingham and Heathcote. Great effort that from Dominic to level things up. It's probably one of his best seasons for quite some time. Quarter finalist at the Welsh, last 16 of the Scottish beat Sean Murphy. Made the international championship second round. He's, uh, yeah, he seems to be reinvigorated. When you think last year, he, I think he needed a couple of wins to stay on tour. And, had a bye because uh, Liang Wembo was not allowed to take part in last year's Crucible. So Dominic, all square with one left to play in this mini session. Last frame of the uh, session for Mark Davis and Ricky. Davis leading 5-3, Walden at the table.
Wakelin and Robbie Williams uh, arguably going to be the last to finish, you would think. Three apiece, very, very early stages of the seventh. Good break by Jack Jones, by the way. 4-2 down against Zhou Yu Long. He's on a break of 62. Closing in on reducing his arrears to one. Liu Heo Chan is on a break of 21 on table four. Well, Stuart Bingham, an awful season by his own high standards. Incredibly, I had to double check this, Dave, and I, I'm pretty sure I didn't make a mistake. Until he beat Carrington, he hadn't won a ranking event match in 2024 because he lost to Liam Pullen in the first round of the German, Marco in the first round of the Welsh, and Ish Pritchada in the first round of the World Open. He's had an absolutely awful time since Christmas. He's been struggling, hasn't he? Yeah, and I think his eyesight has been an issue. He's tried glasses and it didn't quite work. But if any tournament is going to kind of bring you back, I guess it's this one in a way. He's got the great memories, of course, of winning there nine years ago. Just trying to get this last frame on the board now. And then, you know, it's uh, well, just one frame in it, obviously coming back this evening. And he will be aware, of course, Heathcote's never qualified. So he knows from memory of getting there himself for the first time what a big deal that is, a big step that is. And that may just be on his side this evening. Nicely done. So some sort of chance here for Ball Run Bingham, as they call him. Yeah, he's, he was out in China playing pool and just looking at other Q sports, but Snook is his first love for sure. Saw him actually arriving earlier. He had a big smile on his face, you know. I'm sure he's nervous as well, but just looking forward to today. Chance to get himself in the draw, which to reiterate will be Thursday morning. About quarter to nine. Yes, I think I mentioned it, but if you're just joining us, Mark Allen will be flying over to Salford to uh, give his thoughts on uh, on who he ends up drawing. I mean, there's going to be so much. There always is, Dave, but but the the quality on display for Judgment Day Part One and Judgment Day Part Two. There are some potentially gigantic uh, matches, and you know there's going to be some real stinkers for the top 16 to contend with. There are, and there will also, I guess, be maybe a couple of rookies and less experienced players. I'm not saying they're easy draws, but I think you'd have to rather play someone who'd never been there before than, you know, someone like Bingham, for example, who's won the thing. Anyway, let's see if he can win this frame. He's ploughing on here. 31 the lead with the black. So another red and a high value colour should see him home. Yeah, so this is the shot now. Just land on this red, the bottom red of the two. And that should be enough. It would actually put him 40 in front, wouldn't it? So he wouldn't need the colour, but anyway. Two pots. Someone's just suggested the interceptor for Jensen Kendrick after the car. Not not quite so sure about that one, but thanks for the suggestion. I think that, that's the kind of nickname that raises more questions than it answers. Yes. Now then, he's on the red very nicely, actually. So drops this in. It's two snookers needed. And it's going to be 5-4 and another one nicely set up for tonight. 
In it goes, and he's on the black. So maybe table four should be our next port, port of call because uh, Ke Jensen Kendrick, the Stoke Storm, as we keep hearing, he's four each with Lou Hai Shan. So the last frame of the session, and he has a chance to win it. So if we can get to table four, we can see if he can get his nose in front. One of the big stories of the qualifying, without question, is Jensen Kendrick. Here we go. As we pick it up, he's 18 behind, but what a chance this is. Where's, where's this come from? Rob, Rob said, you know, he doesn't know himself. Don't think about it. Just try and pop the balls. Well, it was the Jordan Brown 10-5 that really kind of raised the eyebrows and made people think, wowee, could this, uh, could this four win charge be on? Yulu by 10-7. He had a couple of centuries and three half centuries in that one. Then Ben Wollaston, who's been, you know, struggling to come back to full health and fitness, trying to cope with long COVID. He beat Ben 10-8 with a quartet of half centuries, and that was his return. Ooh, that was his return against Jordan Brown as well. But a little hang of the head there, and that could prove... A costly mistake in this battle to take the last frame of this session against Liu Heo Chan. Well, just briefly, we're going to show you just Stuart Bingham finishing off here. We knew he'd won the frame, but 5 4. So set up nicely, a little trick shot to finish. Or an attempted trick shot, anyway. 5 4. And that's anyone's tonight when they come back at 5 o'clock. Yeah, Stuart Bingham, very much part of the, the history of the Crucible and, of course, would love to be in the draw on Thursday. And winning that frame just keeps him in touch. When they come back later, just one in it. Now, let's see if we can uh, go back to table four. Let's see if Lou Hyshen himself can take a 5-4 lead. Jensen Kendrick had a really good chance, let's be honest. It's weird, though, isn't it? Because, I mean, we're only halfway through the match, but... It almost had a sort of deciding frame feel about it because it's going to decide who's in front. That all, that's all it is going to decide. But Sim Kendrick maybe just felt it a little bit there when he was in. Lou Hyshen, a semi-finalist this season out in Wuhan. He beat Ronnie O'Sullivan. There's not many people who can say that. 14. And he has played, of course, at the Crucible three times. 13. Ooh, that's a kick. That's a kick. That's a bad contact, how unfortunate, and that's made a big difference. He's not on this black. Oh, what a signal. Don't see that many now with the, uh, the finished chalk that most of the players use. Ronnie had a couple of kicks, didn't he, on the, on the old-fashioned chalk in, uh, in Manchester. That was a... What a great week that was, Dave. I mean, it was just... The whole place came alive, didn't it? It was it was a brilliant edition of the Tour Champs. Fantastic, yeah, it really was. And uh, it was a packed crowd. There was never any trouble with anybody. They were passionate, but they didn't go overboard. And yeah, Manchester Central, brilliant venue, right in the centre of Manchester. Now he's nominating yellow, but this is surely a safety. Pushing it safe with the 26 point lead. Just having to get over the disappointment of the kick and that's not easy when you feel it's not your fault thanks for all the uh, the tweets Ben says uh, Kendrick's nickname should be the Kestrel I'm not sure that's going to catch on Ben to be honest with you and also that's extremely hard to say <laughs> Jensen the Kestrel Kendrick yeah that you, you, you could get that one wrong well I could anyway <laughs> John Burns says uh, himself and his sister and his eldest son will be at the Crucible for the first time ever on Sunday for the afternoon session on table two. Well, that, I think, is uh, Judd Trump, actually, to a conclusion. So that'll be a fantastic session to have tickets to, John. Hope you all enjoy it. Yes, and his sister has added to that message, saying it's part of her 70th birthday celebration. So what a place to uh, to announce your arrival as a septuagenarian. If, if I remember, Jane, we'll try and give you a little shout-out. 
Now, Kendrick looked like he was going to win the frame, looked like he was going to lose it. He's 26 behind with a chance at this red. He really sized himself up for that, didn't he? You could see him just getting into a good mental space to pot it. So Lou should push the yellow safe earlier for this very reason. It's going to play its part now. Another indication of his nerve holding good because he was shaking his head from side to side after missing Eight. that red to the middle, but he's got himself another opportunity here. Nerveless Jensen. How about that for a for a uh, potential nickname if he makes it into the draw? Nerveless Jensen. Right, Kent Oherty has had a sandwich, a cup of tea, and he's stretched his famous Irish legs around the block, and he is uh, ready to resume his hot seat alongside the fabulous Dave Hendon. Don't worry, we will be back, or I'll be back later. Well, maybe that's a, not a bonus, I'm not sure, but uh, we'll be there to interview all the players as the qualifiers, one by one, in our second session, edge their way into Thursday morning's draw. More from Dave and Ken as the 1997 champion of the world reclaims his seat next to Hendo. Yeah, thanks, Rob, and we're coming up to the big moment, really, trying to get on this yellow, which is the problem ball for the clearance. And just shade the session. I mean, either way, there's only going to be one in it, but it's nice to leave here in front this afternoon. So this is the shot. He's to come past the yellow. Well, it's, it's not easy this, 21. but it could be a frame winner potentially. Well, does he take it on? He's shaking his head. That means he's not 100% confident taking it on, but he's had another look at the pot. He's got to take it on, surely. If he doesn't take it on, doesn't get another chance, he'd be kicking himself. He's taking it on. Big shot. It's a long way away. A long way away, and he's left it. Yeah, it sort of felt like he didn't really want to take it on. Fair play, he did in the end, but it's become a very nervy frame now. As I say, it sort of feels like a decider, even though it isn't really. It's just deciding who's in front. The Irish have five points in front. But the yellow stays out. Well, there's something sort of golden about Kendrick in these qualifiers, isn't there? There's just something meant to be almost, maybe. Oh, that just gives a little evidence of how the players feeling in these qualifiers because so much at stake for everybody. Normal, those pots, you'd see them, particularly that Liu Hao Shan about that last yellow, but giving it another chance now. This time needs to go, the angle is good. Needs to go, the cue ball, oh, just a little bit short, but he's still okay. Blue is not gonna be in his way, but what a chance. Jensen, Kendrick. One good pot on the green. Cue ball off, two cushions, back around for the brown. That's better. And he's perfect, and he's got a nice angle on the brown as well. Yeah, brown, blue and pink to take the lead. This is someone, let's be honest, was not fancied at the start of the qualifiers to be in the final round, then mine at the Crucible. He struggled over his two years on tour, but is he about to get his tour card back? That will be the prize if he qualifies. Perfect angle on the blue. He could have played it off the cushion and got closer to the pink, but well, 
and you don't expect them to miss it, but there is a lot of pressure. But this would be for a nice lead going into this evening's session. And Jensen Kendrick. Yeah, it's been a nervy frame, this. But he's taking it out nicely. Jensen Kendrick, five. Lee Heinsen, four. I wonder if he can get to table three, because Jack Jones is on a big break against Xiao Yu Long. Here we go. 4-3 down, but as you can see, he's on frame ball red here. Safety's still on. Quarter finalist last year, beat Barry Hawkins to qualify, beat Ali Carter, beat Neil Robertson, and ran Mark Allen close, so we know he can handle the crucible. Yeah, what a run it was. Um, showing a bit of character here. Jack Jones went two nil up, was pegged back. Gone behind, but 78. nice to reply with a good break. 79. And I got a nice little tweet from uh, Itaro Santos, who was on the tour, of course, you remember, Dave. And uh, he's watching in Brazil. And he said, it'd be great to see Stuart Bingham and Neil Robertson qualify. And hope to see us all in Brazil one day, maybe at one of those tournaments. You now they had one out there a long, long time ago. It was quite popular in Brazil. And Itaro Santos, he got Figueiredo, of course, going to come over for the World Seniors at the Crucible straight after the World Championships. But uh, good to hear from you, Taro. Hope you're well. Hope you're playing well and enjoying the coverage. So this is going to be 4-4. Let's go to table eight, though, because they're in the last frame there. 4-4 for Guo Chang and Dominic Dale. And it is the rookie first season pro who has the opportunity here to take a 5-4 lead into the evening. Still a little bit of work to do. Nine points in front. Ooh, the cannon the brown there, so that's gone wrong. Good. Yeah, he's uh, really impressed. Beat Ross Muir, beat Anthony McGill. That was the eye-catching one. Obviously, McGill just sort of you associated with the World Championship. Remember the semi-final with Kyron Wilson? But this young man did for him. And OK, he hasn't won the frame there, but he's got Dominic in a bit of trouble. Yeah, shouldn't be, well, too much of a problem for Dominic Dale. He could play on the red that's close to this left-hand side cushion or he's gonna if he plays on the two reds that are close to the pink the pace has got to be well almost perfect because if he hits it anyway too hard he could separate those two reds leave a red on well we want to give you as much of the action as possible so we're I think gonna go to table two just to show you Chris Wakelin, he made a slow start, he was 2-0 down, lost a bad second frame, but these are long matches and it's all about kind of your attitude, isn't it? There's no point getting down on yourself early on. It's a long way to the finish and he's dug in and he's about to go 4-3 up. That frame's done, he's uh, 40 in front on the colours. So 4-3 to Wakelin. What about over to Ricky Walden and Mark Davis? They're having a right old tussle over there on table seven. There's only three points in the difference between between the two. Let's see if we can make it over table seven, see the state of play. They're having a right old tussle, these two, aren't they? Two experienced campaigners. Yeah. I think we kind of expected it with these two. It's hard to really pick a winner. Mark Davis holds the record, most qualifications. Ricky, obviously... Very dangerous player. Worth saying, of course, he was Luca Purcell's first victim last year, 10-9. Yeah. That could have been a different story. Obviously, if Ricky gets over the line there, then that great fairy tale wouldn't have happened. But Luca got the win, and the rest is history. How long on Saturday before we hear the words crucible curse, do you think? Is it about, <laughs> about 30 seconds? Oh, it's going to be held a lot a lot of times. And uh, let Luca know about it, as, and he knows about it. Of course, everybody does. But yeah, isn't it amazing? 
no first time winner has ever defended the championship at the Crucible since its inauguration there in 1977. 47 years ago. Can you believe it this year? It only seemed, you know, a little while ago we were celebrating 40 years at the Crucible. Now it's, it'll be coming up to 50 soon. Well, this is a classically sort of scrappy last frame, but it's a big one, isn't it? Obviously, mm. Mark Davis went 6-3. Ricky Walden desperate for 5-4. Shall we go back to table eight because there's a little bit more yeah. snooker left in this. Let's go back to see how Dominic got on in that snooker table eight and see what's happened. Well, well, what's happened there? Well, what's happened is he might have left the frame on. I mean, he was he had Dominic banged to rights, but the spaceman has found a way out of trouble and this is his chance for five four. Yeah, what a chance he has. OK, that, that red. Pretty close to the left-hand side cushion, but there's plenty of room in behind it. Now, if he's got an angle on the pink, he could play for the loose red up just past between the blue and the green. But if he's got an angle, he could stun this cue ball right behind this red near the left-hand side cushion. Just didn't have the angle, maybe, so he's gone up for the loose red. But still, it's imperative when potting this red that he gets a nice angle on, on his next colour to get close to that red. That's on the left-hand side of the table. Well, all the matches are, are close, aren't they? We've got one six three. Everything else at the moment is either five four four each. It's going to be some night. Yeah, there's going to be a few nail biters tonight, isn't it? There's going to be a few twitches. Squeaky bum time, as Alex Ferguson once said. And and that's what it's all about: the drama, the excitement tension the nerves and who's going to hold himself together the best he's done well there Dominic because he's got a nice uh, red he can play it up into the green pocket doesn't have to do too much with the cue ball he's playing for brown here which is really clever because the brown will open up the yellow into the same pocket so excellent shot there Keeping a clear mind. He's such a clever player, as I said, Dominic. You know, he, there's nothing he hasn't seen on a snooker table. And now what a chance. Yeah, it's a fascinating experience for youth battle. And, uh, well, it looks like experience may be just shading the first session. It's up to Dominic Dale. It's one of those, no, if he falters here, he's going to be thinking about it, the re you know, the rest of the day until they come back. So just needs to put these away. Seven in front, so green, brown and blue needed. 25. It's funny, the last time we saw him play, he was like in all sorts of trouble. How he's torn this around. Incredible. The blue for five, four. It's been a good game, this. It's, uh, you know, her has more than brought the game to Dominic Dale, but experience just telling in this last more disjointed frame of the afternoon. They'll be back, of course, at 5 o'clock, two and a half hours from now. 5-4, and uh, set up nicely, another match set up nicely. I wonder if we can get to table seven from the end of the Mark davis Ricky Walden session, because that looks like it might be 6-3. Here we go. Might be going 6-3 to Mark Davies. He's got the chance. He uh, needs a good shot here to land nicely on the next red. But it's in his hands. Yeah. What way is he going to play this? He's going to play one, two, maybe three cushions down to this red. He could just play one cushion, maybe two. And he's gone across the table. It's a good angle. Needs a bit of luck with the bounce. Well, it's not too bad. Okay. A cute angle for the red into the left corner, but I can make a little cannon on the pink, maybe. Hold for the black into the opposite corner. But these are tricky little shots. Looking into well, almost a blind pocket, you would say. Bridging over the red. A little awkward. 
A little awkward, but he's done it. And he's made the nice little cannon on the ping just to hold for the black. So that's perfect. Needs an angle. Well, he hasn't hit it hard enough. He's still got a slight angle, but he's going to need red, black, oh, yellow. They put him 25 ahead with 25 on, so he's going to need the green as well. Yeah, he never got nice on that. Oh, he's been very lucky there. Very, very lucky. Didn't get nice on that red. So another tense finish to a frame here. <coughs> it's not been huge breaks. There was a century, having said that from Mark Davis in frame three. Ricky Walden's had two half centuries, but it's not all about that in the qualifying. It's about trying to get to ten yeah. and trying to win these crunch frames as well. This is a really big one, obviously, six three or five four coming back tonight. Just a, a big difference. Yeah, nice little tweet while we watch this uh last frame uh, Alex Hutchins uh, from Plymouth training uh, for the marathon in between sessions today and raising money for Southwest Children's Hospital uh, the best of luck with that Alex oh there's the blue is it going oof <laughs> yeah the best of luck with that Colin Farley watching from Dublin any talk of getting goffs back on the circuit well, I'd love to see a ranking tournament or maybe even something like the Tour Championship coming to Dublin. Need to have, we also, we have the seniors, of course, in, in the golfs, but wouldn't it be great to be back there with another Irish Masters like we were, we loved for many, many years. Great crowds, great atmosphere, very special place, golfs. Colum, I hope we do have a tournament there in the coming years. I will do my best. Oh, this could be very good. Uh, just a little bit pacey. Nearly got him in trouble. But the yellow uh, has blocked the pocket, so there's no shots of nothing on. How's that held on? <laughs> it's clinging on for dear life, that yellow. I wonder if we can very quickly get to table three, because Jack Jones is just a couple of balls away from taking a 5-4 lead over Zhou Yu Long. Another tight session. Oh. And just, just let's see, let's see if he can just pot a couple more balls, and then we'll get back to that other match. Just want to show you this because he's had some big breaks in this match. Yeah, good response, isn't it? We saw the big break in the last frame, and now 67 and counting. Black to make sure his opponent doesn't come back to the table. But there's a lot more points to be had here. Could be a century. He'd be delighted to take a 5-4 lead. Well, he's had breaks of 84, 93, and whatever this becomes in the last three frames. So it's a terrific finish for Jack. He scores really heavily when he gets going, Jack. I haven't seen much of him, to be honest, during the season. Since that wonderful run to the quarterfinals of the World Championship last year, you thought he'd maybe kick on from that. He hasn't. But well, he's definitely a quality player when he gets going and he's full of confidence. Well, he's won this frame. So let's get back to table seven if we can, because they're on the last red, of course, Ricky and Mark. 81. Just want to show you as much action as we can. But this frame is done, clearly. He's won this. So it's going to be 5-4 to Jack Jones. 
but Ricky Walden's just potted the last red. Mark Davis did attempt it from the chance that we left you with, but didn't pot it, and Ricky Walden has done. Here we go. Yellow, of course, as we know, is over the pocket. Oh, I tell you what, he's done really well there. Not always easy to control the cue ball when the object ball is stuck in the jaws of the pocket, but he's controlled it nicely. He's on the yellow into the green pocket. He's got a nice angle and come off one, possibly two cushions for the green. <laughs> oh. Uh. That's just pressure. As experienced as these boys are, everybody succumbs to the pressure. And there is pressure on this for Ricky Walden. Doesn't want to fall three frames behind going into this evening's session. Of course, they're back at 5 p.m. Jack Jones's break was 88, so finished with 84, 93, 88. He leads Joey Long 5 4. Very impressive. Very impressive from Jack Jones. Yeah, so we've got just three matches left on. It's 4-3 Chris Wakelin over Robbie Williams, 4 each Maguire and Yuan Sijun, and of course here, 5-3 Davis over Walden. Yeah, and, and matches have gone pretty quickly, haven't they, for the nine frames? I mean, it, at least it gives the boys a little bit of time between sessions. There's a few complaints, a few sort of murmurings about, about the times, about the 11 o'clock and five o'clock that are probably a little bit too close and players wouldn't have enough time but well if they finish this within the next 15 minutes or so on table five as well is still going table two is still going they will probably be the last to finish but at least they'll they'll have a bit of time off Maybe we could, while well, they're just on this yellow, drop in on table five. Maguire with a chance to lead 5-4 against Yuan Sijun. He was 3-1 down, but of course he's vastly experienced at these longer matches. Here we go, Steve Maguire at the table as we pick it up. Looking to book a 20th appearance at the Crucible. Semi-finalist twice there. But down at uh, 28 in the world rankings, hence having to qualify. Big Ashley Hugel, 10-7. Not a straightforward win by any means in the previous round. Good chance this. 35. Well, how you say that, Dave? Well, what's he on here? It looks like the red is blocking, is it? I'm not quite sure what he's playing for that red that he's closest to into the left centre, but... It looks like everything is blocking each other into this left corner pocket. He's having a good look. We don't have the luxury of, of a camera down towards that left corner pocket. Yeah, so. Well, maybe there's one red that just about pots. He has to go maybe up for a ball colour. Yeah, but no, they're all blocking each other, so a mistake. Yeah, I, I, I thought... The reason I thought he was on a red was because there was no reaction from him. You normally, if something would have gone wrong like that, he would have let you know, but he didn't. And even there, he didn't react, which I guess maybe is good news for him. So another frame that is far from straightforward to win. Let's see if we can get back to table seven, because Ricky Walden's potted the yellow there. So that frame has been going for a while, but Ricky with another chance. Here we go. So he's 10 behind on the green. So this is the shot. The cue ball needs to run a bit. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. He needs blue and pink, and he'll be delighted to get out of this just 5-4 down. It's been a frame that was well and truly in the balance, but it's in Ricky Walden's hands to stay in touch, and it'll be yet another match coming back later with just one frame in it.
In it goes. So another session ends with just one frame between the players. Mark Davis leads Ricky Walden 5-4. Back to table five we go. Stephen Maguire, 38 in front. Four each with Yuan Sijun, but broke down. And here is Yuan Sijun's chance to edge in front himself. He's never played at the Crucible, but I think he would be a dangerous qualifier. He's got a lot of scalps under his belt because he did drop off the tour, got back on. <coughs> One. Well, a little bit of pressure on this next black. He knows if he misses it, he's probably going to lose the frame with Maguire already 37 in front. Good black, but well, I just lost the cue ball. <laughs> Look where the cue ball is finished. Could be end of break. Big groan from Juan Cijon. That red doesn't look potable. The one left of the pink. Disappointed. That was a great chance. Even if it is potable, this red, I mean, it's so difficult. He's coming around. Always a good idea. Come around, have a look from the pocket side. But doesn't look from here and he's got to play safe what he, what he can do is take this red off the cushion bring it into play with a 30 point deficit he's going to need it I had a tweet from Robert Marshall former professional joined the coverage saying hope to see my good friends Dominic and Mark Davis come through Robert Marshall eh? there's one in the old days when I turned professional and even in the amateur days used to play him many times on the old pro-am circuit. Good player, Robert Marshall. Hope he's enjoying the coverage. Nice to hear from you, Robert. Yeah, thanks to everybody who's uh, been messaging. Sorry if yours hasn't been read out as you answered and pots that, but obviously we're also trying to <laughs> trying to keep across all the matches as well. But there's a good community feel to Judgment Day. I think everybody recognises how hard it is for the players and how important it is as well. Oh, he thought he thought he made a mess of that, but he's okay. It seems pretty much every last frame of the session has been like this, a bit sort of disjointed. You can sense the pressure, even though it's only for these two going to be a one frame difference either way. You still would rather be in front, obviously. The other match, by the way, 4-3 Wakel over Robbie Williams and uh, uh, Wakelin's playing for snookers in the next, so it's looking like 4-4 there as well. Oh, he's given it a good old wallop. Well, I'll tell you what, it's not the worst result. Well, that's a good old Stephen Maguire wallop. <laughs> and he's had a right result in all fairness. Trying to get something safe, but nothing is safe. But this could have been easier. He's got a red into the right centre. He'd play off two cushions, maybe for yellow or green, into the same pocket if it goes in. Element of safety. Well, what's that noise? It's a bit of late for an alarm, unless you're on the night shift, David. I don't know what, what that noise was, to be honest. Well, alarm bells. <laughs> Maybe ringing after that shot, actually, because he's left a chance already. 29 to the good Maguire. Just 
prepared himself. It's interesting when it went wrong earlier a couple of times, Maguire didn't react at all. Just kept himself calm. Well, that the noise is going off again. I don't know what that is, but we could do without it. <laughs> it's a very important shot. This just just gonna have a little wonder and just compose himself. Yeah. Very important shot. If he knocks it in, gets on the green, well, you'd expect him to win the frame from this visit. Dead straight, tough shot across the cloth into these tight middle pockets. Oh, well played. Good part. Right in the middle of the pocket. This will hurt Juan Cijon because he had a chance earlier on. And he got... Stephen McGuire in a lot of trouble there. He had a bit of a lash out, got away with it. A few reds in that pocket, isn't there? Just as well, Jan has big hands. Well, he was very disappointed to miss out last year. And it's been struggling in general. But if you have a good world championship, it sort of puts everything right, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's changed cues quite a lot. Sort of... 11. Done it throughout sort of the last, like, four or five years. And never really found a cue that he's sort of happy with. Maybe he has the one now. And he's still involved in a, a big tussle with the young Chinese player, Juan Cijon. Oh, this looks quite heavy-handed. 18. He's 47 in, in the lead, so he's uh, he's over the line virtually, but doesn't want his opponent coming back and playing for snooker. He's love to pot this red and make sure of the frame. Only one snooker required. So, 53 in front. He snoogged himself, but he should hit this, and that should be that. As far as the session is concerned, there's the handshake. It's set up nicely. Yet another one at 5-4. All these matches are close, but it's Steve Maguire who holds the edge over Yuan Sijun at the halfway stage. Which means there's just one frame left to be played, and it's between Chris Wakelin and Robbie Williams. Here they are. It's four each. Chris Wakelin at the table. He was struggling early on in this match, but he's dug in and uh, would love now to be in front. So they're all going to be 5-4, apart from the Lazowski 6-3. Oh, well. What happened there? Chris Wakelin. Well, I'll tell you what, he's had a right result again. Look at that, where the cue ball is finished. OK, Robbie Williams, you die to be back at the table, but I feel a little bit aggrieved that I could have had a, an easy red to go at. But really poor miss from Chris Wakelin, black off the spot. As I say, they're all set up nicely. There's no 7-2s, no 8-1s, nothing like that. Just 1-6-3 and uh, some exciting finishes to come tonight mm. for sure. It's quite incredible, that, really, isn't it? I mean, you're going to have one seven five fours either way. He would have got really good odds on that one. A little tweet from Elijah. He says, uh, try and study in. While listening to you guys in the background just doesn't work. Judgment Day deserves watching it in full attention. Listening in from Serbia. Also cheering on for Lizowski. He deserves a spot at the Crucible. Well, I hope you're enjoying. Hope we don't disturb your studying too much, Elijah. You better get your exams. We don't want to be blamed for that, do we, Dave? Absolutely not. 
<laughs> get blamed for enough already. Anyway, Chris Wakelin with another chance here. Just to end the afternoon on a high. One. Yeah, Dean in the Perth, Western Australia, he says another sh shout out to the Pop Black Club in North Perth. We have six tables. A few years ago, Neil Robertson knocked in back to back 147s on our match table. That must have been something to, something to behold. Here's a good one, Dave. Uh, from Hash J1X, he says, uh, what commentator catchphrase do you enjoy the best? <laughs> There's been so many of them, isn't there? Well, the best one has got to be where's the cue ball going? Oh, I mean, yeah, that's, well, that's, that's become iconic, hasn't absolutely, it? Absolutely. JV. Yeah. You even see people come to the Crucible, don't you, with T-shirts on. Where's the cue ball going? I used to like if someone in a best of nine went four two up, Clive Everton would always say he's two up with three to play. Which <laughs> yeah, is very yeah, succinct, yeah. but told you all you needed to know. Yeah. I think my favourite was always the Ted Lowe one, for those of you watching, in black and white. The blue is next to the brown. Well, it doesn't get much better than that. Well, yeah, I mean, Ted, when he started in the sort of primitive days of television, would sit in the audience. That's why, yeah. he, that's why he was whispering. He'd call yeah. him whispering Ted Lowe. He had to. Yeah. Otherwise, people would hear him. <laughs> Oh my goodness. What is going on here? That's a black off the spot, a blue, almost a missable blue off the spot from Chris Wakeland. Now, if Robbie Williams could take advantage here, well, Chris Wakeland, maybe thinking about those two really unforced errors, really bad misses, like throughout the, this couple of hour break. One. Straight away, trying to get that black on the spot. And he's perfect on it into the left centre. Yeah, all these last frames have followed a similar pattern. They've all been nervy. And it's because they're the last frames, I think. Just you're trying to get any sort of edge at this World Championship. Robbie Williams' chance to do exactly that. Can he knock this red in? Just soft screw the cue ball for the black into the same pocket. Fifteen. Yeah, nicely played, and he's got a nice angle on the black. He can screw it back or run it off two cushions. He's going to screw it back. Looks pretty 20. composed. 23. Still a little bit of work to do just yet for Robbie Williams to get over the line. Point in the lead. Yeah, he knew he'd be leaving the next red a little bit from distance, but still 
It's in his hands here. Tatiana Wollaston. In charge here. I'm just going to say if he screws this red in. There's a test of the cue action here. Yeah, well played. Nicely on the blue. So far, so good for Robbie Williams. 43. 44. I was going to say he's got no regrets, but I don't want to use any more of those pawns, Dave. Sorry. No, you're shaking your head. Well, the bad news is. He there's a lot of songs to choose from, so there might be more <laughs> coming tonight, everybody. <laughs> yeah, we could go into the next millennium, couldn't we? <laughs> right, that's enough. Getting to the serious business end of this frame and match. For this session, of course, they're back at 5 o'clock. Later on, to finish. And so far... Robbie Williams was taking these really, really nicely. Pink, one more red will put him. And his opponent needing snookers. But he'd like to really finish this off, not get his opponent back to the table. And he's done this in style, hasn't he? He's really done well here. Well, he's been clearly the steadier of the two. I mean, Wakelin missed a couple of, for him, horror shots, really, in this frame. So this is the one. And Robbie Williams will hold the edge coming back tonight. But in all these matches, there's a long way to go. There's only one at 6-3. All the others are 5-4. So tonight, a lot of drama ahead of us. 64. <coughs> now, can he just clear the table and send himself off for the... Break between sessions, feeling good. Well, he hasn't, so there's still half a chance here. Two snookers needed. One in that red in, really, and that would have stopped any playing on. Chris Wakelin will give this a go. And they'll have about two hours to get ready for the next session. Well, he is himself snookered, so he needs to hit this first and foremost and try and get it safe. Chance to put the red away again here and bring the curtain down on what's been a fascinating session. Four hours, but it's flown by. Thanks for all your contributions, everyone watching. We'll be back, of course, for the second session later. Now, can he just put the red away? And what Wakely may even shake his hand. <coughs> In it goes, and that's exactly what's happened. There's the concession. So it is Robbie Williams who holds the edge here, 5 4. Another close match in a series of close matches here on Judgment Day, the first of two days of final qualifying round, of final qualifying for the Kazoo World Championship. And they've got a couple of hours before they come back tonight for the final session. So that concludes uh, the coverage. We're going to run through the scores for you and just uh, show you where it all stands. Jack Lazowski, 6-3 up on Matthew Stevens. There were some close frames there. That could have been another 5-4, but Lazowski... 17 in the world, highest ranked player having to qualify. He's three frames in front coming back this evening. As we've just seen, Robbie Williams holding the edge 5-4 over Chris Wakelin. 
made a slow start Wakelin, but in the end he could have been in front there, just missed a couple in the last frame of the session, but still that is anyone's, as indeed his table. Three, Jack Jones though, finished very strongly, three big breaks in the last three frames from 4-2 down to lead Zhou Yulong 5-4. The surprise package of the qualifiers, Jensen Kendrick, he's come all the way from the first qualifying round, the world number 104, leads 5-4 against Lou Heysen, five frames away from the Crucible. <coughs> Stephen Maguire, very experienced campaigner, 19 times at the Crucible, two semi-finals, he holds the edge 5-4 over Yuan Sijun. Well, the last frame there did the Scotsman. Another potential debutant is Louis Heathcote, and he leads the former champion, the 2015 world champion, Stuart Bingham, 5-4. Another very tight one, Louis Heathcote, again, five frames from fulfilling his dream of playing at the Crucible. Mark Davis is the record qualifier 11 times he's qualified and he again in a close match leads Ricky Walden 5-4 it could have been 6-3 Ricky Walden won the last frame of the session on the pink and Dominic Dale another very experienced campaigner 52 the oldest player left in the qualifying leads her Guo Chang of China another rookie another potential debutant 5-4 so seven matches at 5-4 Jack Lazowski 6-3 up in his one we'll do it all again at uh, five o'clock local time but uh, just to recap the scores it's uh, six three to Lazowski of course it's uh, five four to Williams over Wakelin five four Jones over Zhou Yulong five four Jensen Kendrick over Lu Haishan and uh, on to page two requires five four up on Yuan Sijun Louis Heathcote five four over Stuart Bingham Mark Davis 5-4 over Ricky Walden and Dominic Dale 5-4 over her Gu Chang. So we'll be back in just under two hours, five o'clock. Thanks for your company. We'll do it all again. And tonight we will have our first eight qualifiers for the Crucible. We'll see you later. For now, though, it's goodbye.